What's up guys? It's yo boy Omnisensei back with a new what if series. Reborn as Super Lion and Lion King. Part 1. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Choose one random box of cheats. What's going on as Soul spoke as he read the text right in front of him. Looking around he found hundreds of boxes with a question mark in front of him. Did I die? Everything is hazy who am I? The soul spoke to himself. He could remember his former world, but not his identity. Fine then, I'll play along, I choose you. The soul shouted while pointing at a random box he felt would give him something good all the other boxes turned to ash, while the one he pointed to started shining. The soul soon found that the box turned into a syringe. What kind of cheat is that? The soul looked at it confused. Syringes always creeped him out. Suddenly the syringe jumped at him and bit him. Eek, I don't want this cheat. Take it back the soul shouted in fright. After the syringe injected him with a fluid, it disappeared. Congratulations, you received the blessing of a super serum soldier syringe. In your next life, you'll be stronger, faster, and have better reflexes warning you won't be born with your memories intact, you'll receive them as you age. Huh, I'm Captain America. Oh no. Not the Marvel world I'm doomed the soul sounded very hopeless, yet it started shining before disappearing as well. On top of a cliff that overlooked the Pride Lands, stood the current Lion King, Mufasa. He looked down on all the animals that had gathered to see who the next crown prince would be. A bird landed in front of the mighty Lion King and bowed. Mufasa just smiled at him. All animals looked at Mufasa, he was a great lion and even greater king. During his reign, the animals had food to eat and water to drink. The borders were protected from other predators. They all hoped that the next in Lion King would also respect the circle of life. Soon a baboon walked up on top of the cliff, called Pride Rock, and bowed beside the bird. Mufasa smiled even brighter and hugged him, they had been friends for as long as he could remember. Rafiki, let's start the ceremony. Mufasa spoke. Even though he sounded wise and calm, Rafiki that had known Mufasa since childhood, knew that Mufasa was very excited. Yes my king. They walked back to the Queen of Pride Lands, Sarabi, and found her with two cubs in her arms. There's two of them your majesty. Rafiki asked, he hadn't known about this, since this was his first time meeting the newborns. Yes Rafiki, Simba and Asafa, twins. Mufasa said as he lovingly gazed at his sons. Then who is the oldest my, my king? Rafiki asked, looking forward to holding the crown prince. Simba. Sarabi answered in the king's stead, as she carefully pushed forward a curious looking little lion cub. Both Simba and Asafa looked similar, but there were distinct differences. Simba looks just like the two of you. Rafiki said as he brought forward a big fruit, he broke it in two and used the juice from the fruit to mark the forehead of Simba. The mark of the crown prince. Then Rafiki turned towards Asafa and patted his head. He looks like you as well, but Rafiki recognizes the former king in him. Rafiki said with a smile, as he saw similarities between Asafa and the king before Mufasa. Mufasa couldn't help but to smile brightly, as his second son looked like his father. Simba looked like the mix of Mufasa and Saratobi. And while Asafa was similar, he also had hints of the former Lion King. Asafa had green eyes, slightly darker fur somewhere between orange and brown. He also had a slight mane on top of his head, which was a shade darker than Mufasa's, a dark brown mane similar to his grandfather. Indeed, Rafiki sees greatness in both of them. Rafiki said as he finally picked up Simba. Mufasa and Sarabi followed him to the Pride Rock's cliff. They stood behind him as the ceremony started. Beneath the cliff, all the representatives and elders of different animal kin had gathered to see the next king. Rafiki held up Simba and all the animals then bowed down. Sarabi and Mufasa were smiling, but even then, Mufasa had a glint of worry in his eyes as he looked around. He was searching for his younger brother Scar. Not finding him, Mufasa decided to deal with it later. 
Under Sarabi, Asafa sat and looked around curiously. A baby's brain wasn't developed enough to carry and understand complex information such as past life, so at this moment, Asafa was nothing more than a newborn. After the ceremony, Mufasa had lots of meetings and gatherings to take care of, so he only arrived back in the pride den in late hours, when the skies had turned dark. He found both Simba and Asafa in the arms of Sarabi. As Mufasa lied down beside his queen, he was surprised to find her awake. Mufasa, look at their sizes. Sarabi whispered in slight worry. Mufasa compared the two in confusion. Seeing the askance on his face, Sarabi explained her worries. Simba is the oldest, the crown prince, yet Asafa is bigger and was born with a mane Sarabi said. Mufasa then understood her worries. For lions, strength, size and wisdom were essential qualities of the hierarchy in their pride. If Asafa grew to be bigger and stronger, then a fight might break out between the brothers for the throne. Mufasa frowned as he thought about this. Don't worry, we'll raise them well. Mufasa said, but Sarabi's worry was not unnecessary, and he understood that. This is what it means to be a lion. Even Mufasa, when he was a crown prince had been challenged by his younger brother for the throne. Mufasa was bigger and stronger, which led to his victory, but the fight had been fierce, and his little brother gained a scar above his eye, gaining him the new name Scar, as a reminder of his place as second place. Mufasa didn't want his sons to repeat history, since Mufasa had felt his relationship with his brother become weaker and weaker since his victory over him. Even until this day it confused him why Scar became so obsessed with the throne, previously he had never shown any interest in it. In the savanna of the Pride Lands, just behind the Pride Rock was a small lake. Beside the lake laid a young lion cub, with brown mane that had slightly developed. He lay there enjoying the sun, breeze and the cooling water from the lake, as one of his paws was inside the lake. Suddenly his ears twitched as he heard some grass rustling. Not again Asafa though as another lion cub suddenly jumped at him. Rauer acute roar shouted out as the cub jumped at him. Asafa simply rolled over, making the roaring cub fall into the lake. Splash. Nala. Another cub jumped out looking similar to the first one that had ended up in the lake. The sound of waves was heard as a small lion's head arose from the water. Not fair, how do you always know when I'm preying on you? Nala, the cub in the water said. You make too much sound. Asafa lazily said as he laid on his back. Nala, stop attacking Asafa. The other cub said. Splash Nala jumped out of the water and stood near Asafa as she shook off all the water from her fur. Intentionally standing near Asafa so he would get wet. With a grin she looked over at him and found him not bothered by what she did. Perfect weather to get wet. He said. You ha fine, I'll bother your brother instead, where is he? Nala said. She could never win over Asafa, so she always felt frustrated by him. But Simba. Asafa's twin brother was another deal. She always won over him. Nala was slightly older than the twins, so she had superior physical strength at the moment compared to Simba, yet Asafa made her grind her teeth. Simba. I don't know, he's probably hunting a bug or something as usual. Asafa answered lazily. Simba really was a ball of energy, always shouting about becoming a king, someone strong and always running around and playing. Yet he couldn't beat Nala. Fine then, Ayana, come with me, we'll hunt down the king. Nala said in an excited tone. I don't want to, you and Simba are just causing trouble all the time. The other cub retorted. HMPH, suit yourself. Nala said as she ran along. Sorry. Ayana said meekly. No worries, it was fun seeing your sister fall into the lake. Asafa said with a grin. You're right haha. Ayana said as she also laid down. She'd rather enjoy peace, whilst her sister wanted war. Nala was a year older than Simba and Asafa, but Ayana was about the same age. They also looked very similar, just like smaller versions of Serafina, their mother. Can I ask something? Ayana asked, she seemed bothered by something. Asafa laid there lazily and simply nodded. Why is Simba the crown prince? You're bigger and smarter, and stronger, and faster, and she stopped herself as she realized that she had used too many describing words. Hmm, he is the twin that was born first. Asafa chuckled at her. He usually teases her as she is such an easy target, being gullible and innocent. Seeing how she looked down in sadness as if Asafa had lost something important, Asafa felt that he had to pick her up. But that's good in a way Asafa said, as if he didn't have any intention on explaining why. 
which made Ayana curious. Why is that good? She asked curiously with her big kitten eyes, expecting a good answer. The king has to work hard, while I can relax and live the good life being the prince's little brother. I get to live like a king, but I don't have to work like one. He said with a grin as he stretched his limbs. Why are that so smart yes it's better to not be king, only dummies are kings. She said with a glint in her eyes as if she realized something important. Yes, only dummies are kings. Asafa chuckled, he stood up and looked towards the pride rocks. Asafa had found that he knew about the pride lands, Simba and even the future, although everything was hazy. But he couldn't put his finger on why he knew all that he knew. And he couldn't recollect the details, all he really knew was that he knew about this world in his previous life. Why, how and when are all a mystery to him. Looking at Ayana, she looked to be in a daze. Asafa moved slightly closer to her, and when she didn't expect it, he used his behind leg to push her into the pond. Haha <laughs> you need be vigilant if you're ever going to be a huntress. He laughed. Blah, you cheated. Wait until I get you. She shouted as she jumped out of the water and chased him. How scary, I might need to call my royal, king brother to save me. He laughed as she chased him. You. You. Yao she felt like he was teasing her. Seeing her facial expressions he couldn't help but to laugh even more, she was so obvious, more so than her sister Nala. Suddenly, the servant of his father, a little blue bird flew towards them with panic written all over his face. Young prince have you seen your brother? I've lost him and Nala. Zazu shouted in fear. He had been given direct orders by the queen to follow and babysit Simba and Nala while they went to the water hole. Simba claimed he had found something. But then they both escaped his watch. Zazu was aware of both Simba's and Nala's mischievousness and worried that they were about to do something bad. Hey, Zazu, take it easy, why are you so panicked? Asafa asked, he knew his brother always did things like this. They was supposed to go to the water hole, but they aren't there, I'm worried something might have happened. Zazu said in worry. Asafa frowned at this, water hole. Why does this sound so familiar? Wait, wasn't this his excuse to leave for the elephant graveyard? Asafa realized something. He knew something like this would happen sooner or later, but he didn't think too deeply about it, since most of the time, whenever Simba came up with something really mischievous, he always dragged Asafa into it. Although he knew something like this would happen, the memory was hazy, and he barely remembers anything about it. Why would he do something so stupid without even telling me? Asafa wondered as he stood up. Where is father? Asafa asked the worried bird. He went for border control, what should we do? Zazu said. Go tell my mother about this, I'll try to find him first. Asafa said. What if he's just playing around again, should we really disturb the queen with this? Zazu asked, still worried, but he didn't want to worry the queen as well. And what if he has put himself in danger along with Nala? Better be safe than sorry, hurry. Asafa said before he ran along. Zazu flapped his wings and flew towards the pride rock. Wait for me. A little cub tried running after Asafa. Ayana, go to the water hole and see if you can find them there. Asafa shouted, giving her orders to go somewhere safe, so she wouldn't be involved in what came next. Asafa ran with all his might towards the elephant graveyard. His speed had already reached that of 70% of a grown female lioness. And right now he was hurrying there because he was slightly panicked and stressed. Simba was his brother and they were close, even though they had a rivalry with each other. Simba wasn't sure what would happen because he couldn't rely on memories from past life, what if things went differently? He had to do something to help. Although he couldn't do much, he could at least rival one or two hyenas, while Simba couldn't even amount to half a hyena. It took a while before he finally reached a creepy graveyard made of skeletons. As he arrived, he tried to keep his composure and keep silent. Using his nose he tried to find traces of his brother and Nala, although his nose was more sensitive to smells than lions, he was no dog. It took a while before he found a small paw print, smelling it he found Simba's odor. Finally, Simba, Nala, you guys better be alright. Asafa thought. He follows the trails until they became clearer. Finally he started hearing hyenas laughing in the distance, and he also heard his brother shouting for Nala. Hearing their direction, Asafa hurried after their directions. As he was nearing, he found openings to tunnels everywhere. Before he could stop to try to locate them even more he heard rustling behind him. 
Hi you hi you hi you look, I found another piece of meat, it must be our lucky day. The hyena said with a grin on his face. Drool was coming out of his mouth. Little cub, how about you stay here and eat with us? He said, with obvious evil intentions. Asafa's ears picked up multiple hyenas that were stealthily coming toward their place. He's trying to distract me. Asafa realized, so he jumped into one of the tunnels and tried to find Simba and Nala. Damn it, he ran into the tunnels as well, hurry, find them. He heard one of the hyenas shouting. Simba. Asafa heard Nala shout for Simba, so he chose a tunnel and followed their direction. Asafa finally found them, he had come out on top of a crevice, and found both Simba and Nala inside a small cave, surrounded by two hyenas walking towards them. Without thinking, he jumped down and landed on one of the hyenas, pushing him away before pouncing onto the other hyena, using his head to push him away. Both Simba and Nala lit up when they found that Asafa had come. Asafa, what are you doing here? Simba said in worry even though he was obviously happy to have his brother's help. He had realized how stupid it was for them to go outside the pride's land. Don't sit there, hurry, follow me. Asafa shouted as he took the lead in jumping into another tunnel between heaps of skeletons. Both Nala and Simba hurried after him before the hyenas could attack them. They all came out and found themselves inside a deep crevice, so they hurried forward to get away from the hyenas. Asafa kept his pace so Nala and Simba could keep up, yet, what greeted them was a dead end, with a huge elephant skull which they climbed on top of. The hyenas finally caught up to them. Ho ho ho, looks like we're going to have grilled lion legs tonight. One of the hyenas said. Three juicy lion cubs. Another quipped. Flaps of a bird could be heard as Azu found them. Simba, Nala are you alright? Huh, Asafa. How did you get here? Zazu shouted as he landed near them. A group of trespassers. One of hyenas said as they started to surround them. Quite by accident let me assure you. Zazu said nervously, trying to find a way to resolve this. I know you, you're Mufasa's little toothpick. One of the hyenas recognized Zazu. And that would make you. Another one said as he looked at Simba. The future king. He shouted in defiance. Do you know what we do to little kings that go outside of their kingdom? One of the hyenas asked rhetorically. I can go wherever I want, I'm the next king. Simba shouted, earning Asafa's and Zazu's glare. Shut up, you'll be a dead king otherwise. Asafa said. Mufasa has at least one kid with brains. One of the hyenas said drooling. Oh look at the time, it's lunchtime. One said as he was about to kill one of them. Simba hurriedly stepped forward and roared, sadly, only a kitten's roar came out. Ha ha ha, do it again, do it again. The hyenas found that hilarious. Simba roared again, but nothing happened. Asafa looked around, hoping that their father would arrive soon. Suddenly the hyenas tensed up because they felt the roar of many lionesses that had come into their turf, angrily roaring them. Simba and Nala lit up when they found their mothers, and the other lionesses had come to save them. Queen of Pride Lands, is this a declaration of war? One of the hyenas suddenly said very seriously as he growled. Suddenly, many hyenas, ten times their numbers came out of their hiding. It's you who were about to harm the next in line, you're the one declaring. Sarabi said growling. They came into our turf, you have no might here. The leading hyenas said as all the hyenas seemed ready to kill. Simba paled as he realized the gravity of his actions, it seems like he realized that a lion can't just do as he pleases. We can't let the next king die, no matter what. Sarabi said making her intention to fight if necessary clear. Then you can have the next king, but the other three is our food. As these words came out, Asafa saw Simba almost fall down in shame. Let this be a growing lesson Simba Asafa thought. Roar the might roar of a lion king was heard suddenly. Almost making the ground shake. Father. Asafa finally realized a sigh as he realized that Mufasa had come. All the hyenas backed off in fright. Mufasa walked forward and stood in front of his sons, showing an aggressive stance of anger. Mufasa, do you really intend for war with this, it's you who came to our turf, we want an explanation or expect a retribution. Mufasa calmed down at this, he knew that the pride lands were stronger, yet, if the hyenas really invaded, it would cost many lives to protect the pride lands. Even if they win they might lose parts of their territory because of their loss of lions. Take them and return, I'll come soon. Mufasa turned towards the Sarabi and commanded. She nodded and told her children and Nala to follow. 
Simba could only do so with his head lowered out of shame. Asafa looked at Mufasa and realized that he stayed behind to resolve this somehow. Being king is a heavy responsibility, I'm happy I'm not the crown prince Asafa thought, feeling sorry for his father. They all slowly returned towards the pride lands, not speaking a single word. Suddenly when the pride rocks were in sight, Asafa stopped in his tracks, making Sarabi glare at him slightly. Mother I think it's best for me and Simba to wait here, I believe our father has. Something to say to us regarding the events that happened today. Asafa explained himself. She looked at him for a second before nodding, and then she kept walking with the others, except for Simba that sat down. Shame and guilt still seemed to weigh him down. When the others had walked far enough, Asafa walked up to Simba. Will you hate me? Simba asked without looking up. Asafa simply put his head on Simba's, to show affection. I'm just glad you're okay, you had me worried. Asafa said, quite honestly. Simba was waiting for an outburst of anger, so he was surprised at the tone his brother was speaking. You were so awesome when you suddenly came from the sky and attacked those two hyenas. Simba suddenly got excited as his brother wasn't mad at him. As they were talking they heard footsteps nearing them form behind, so they turned around and found a huge lion walking towards them. Gulp, dad looks really angry you think we will survive this. Simba couldn't help but to ask as he looked towards his dad. Maybe Asafa said. Mufasa arrived in front of the two and just looked down on them as he towered over them. After a few seconds of staring and silences, he walked past them. Follow me. Mufasa told them. Simba and Asafa looked at each other and then followed their father. I'm very disappointed in you too. His voice was heavy, and both Simba and Asafa felt saddened by those words. Asafa, you rushed towards the graveyard without my permission, and didn't consider your own safety. Asafa couldn't answer. He knew that Mufasa and the lionesses would have saved Simba and Nala, yet he wasn't willing to bet that everything would go according to plan. In panic, he chose to chase Simba and Nala, which might have not only put himself in danger, but also put those two in even more danger. Simba, you deliberately disobeyed me, and what's worse, you put Nala and your brother in danger. I couldn't sit still when my brother and friend were in danger. Asafa said meekly. Mufasa's presence is mighty, especially when he is angry. Mufasa didn't answer, but for a second, Asafa thought he saw pride in his father's eyes as he said that. Simba's face fell. I was just trying to be brave like you. Simba said to his father. I'm only brave when I have to, Mufasa said as he looked at his two sons. Between his two sons, Simba was the more adventurous one, the more rebellious and fearless one. Asafa wasn't cowardly nor fearful by any means, but compared to Simba that seemed to not understand the concept of danger, Asafa was the more mature one. Yet today Asafa had shown the bravery and courage of a Lion King, willing to put his life on the line to protect those close to him. Yet, Mufasa couldn't praise Asafa as he didn't want him to put his life in danger, not right now when he is a cub when they grow older, then they will be required to do so as the royal lions, but right now they are young, weak cubs. Being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. Asafa noticed that his father's tone had changed into one of worry. But you're not scared of anything. Simba said. I was today, you were. Simba asked surprised, even Asafa looked at Mufasa expectantly, waiting for him to continue. I thought I might lose my sons, Mufasa whispered as he bowed his head closer to Asafa and Simba. Oh. I guess even kings get scared huh? Simba realized. But you know what, Asafa whispered, making them both slightly tilt towards him. I think those hyenas were even more scared. Asafa said with a grin, making both Mufasa laugh Simba light up. Cause nobody messes with your dad, come here you two. Mufasa said as he brought his two sons and hugged them. Simba and Asafa fought back and pushed down their dad playfully. Mufasa still laughing. Dad today I was worried that I would lose someone as well, Asafa finally confessed his worries as well. You'll always be with us, right? Simba asked his father, hearing my confession. It seems that, although they thought of their father as an invincible superhero, they still got worried for him today when he faced enemies. Asafa, Simba let me tell you too something that my father told me, look at the stars. Mufasa said in his deep wise voice while looking upward. Both brothers followed his gaze and looked up. The great kings of the past looked down on us from the stars Mufasa explained. Really? Both Simba and Asafa asked. 
Yes, so whenever you feel alone, remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. And one day, so will I Simba still kept looking up towards the sky, not really comprehending what his father meant. Asafa changed his sight form the stars to his father. He understood the magnitude of those words he knew that someday in the future something would happen to Mufasa which would lead to Simba running away, but for the life of him, he couldn't remember what it was. Mufasa sensed Asafa looking at him, so he met his gaze. Seeing the worry in Asafa's eyes, Mufasa understood that his youngest had understood his words, so he simply put a paw over Asafa's head, as a way to comfort him. The day after, on a clear, sunny day, Simba and Asafa had been called by their uncle Scar for a surprise. Asafa had feeling that something ominous was about to happen, but Simba was obvious and went to meet with their uncle in a the rift of pride lands. Asafa followed as he felt like he had to. He couldn't remember what, but he strongly felt like something was about to happen. When they arrived they found Scar waiting for them. My dear nieces how happy I am to see you. Uncle Scar. Simba quipped happily. Uncle Scar what surprise did you call us for? Asafa asked, he still couldn't get rid of the feeling that followed him. It wouldn't be much of a surprise if so told you, would it? Scar asked. Follow me, I'll show you where to. Scar said as he walked into the rift valley. Simba and Asafa kept walking behind him until they came to a stone with a small tree. So what's the surprise uncle? Asafa asked again, wanting to get this whole thing done with. I need to go get your father first, it's a father-son thing. Can I go with you to bring dad? Simba asked. No, stay on this rock, we wouldn't want another mess like the one with the hyenas, would we? You heard about that? Simba asked in surprise. Everybody heard about that, and Simba, just between us, you might need to work on that little roar of yours. Scar said as he hugged Simba close. Asafa was frowning, he didn't know why but he felt like he should remember something important. The older Asafa got, the more he remembered from about this world from his past life, yet his brain hadn't matured enough to remember everything. Everything was hazy. Hey, Uncle Scar, will we like this surprise? Simba asked. Oh, it's to die for. He said as he walked away. Simba, I don't know why, but I got a bad feeling, maybe we should go back and meet up with Dad. Asafa said. No, Uncle Scar told us to wait here. Simba answered with certainty. He didn't want to mess up again like last time. So what do you think the surprise will be? Simba asked after a while. Maybe he'll teach us how to hunt or something. Or maybe he'll teach us how he roars like a king. Simba hoped. Hmm, maybe he'll nag us again. Asafa speculated. PFFT maybe. After a while, Simba started working on his roar, and it sounded mightier than usual as it echoed throughout the rift valley. Even Asafa started to roar and compete with Simba. Roar roaya roaya ha ha I won. Asafa laughed at his brother, but both were silenced as they started to feel a small earthquake, Simba do you see what I see, gulp Asafa had never felt this kind of terror before. The stress of the events that were unfolding, and the stress of the premonition he had since earlier made everything worse. That the ravine was filling up with hundreds of wildebeests all chaotically running for their lives, and at the forefront, Simba and Asafa ran for their lives. Asafa looked back and found to his horror that the wildebeest had neared, just any second now, both him and his brother would fall beneath the hopes of hundreds of wildebeests. As soon as they saw the wildebeest run into the ravine form one end, they had started running to the other end, and just as they were about to be swallowed by the horde of wildebeest, Simba and Asafa found a small tree which they climbed up onto. They looked down in fear and horror as they saw the beasts hurry past them, some of which crashed into the tree they were on, making it shake violently. Both Simba and Asafa were in a dire state. Brother hold on. Asafa shouted as he saw that Simba was struggling to hold onto the tree. I I can't, I'm losing my grip. Simba roared back in fear. Asafa was stronger and more agile, so he did his best to climb closer to his brother to support him with his own claws, which seemed to work, although it hurt Simba. Hold on, you can't die here. Asafa shouted in clear fear, he didn't want to die, nor to see his brother die. Asafe I'm sorry. Simba cried out. Seeing the hint of confusion mixed in with terror in Asafa's eyes, Simba shouted once again. I'm sorry for being jealous of you, I love you. Simba cried out. He had realized that he always felt jealousy towards Asafa, as his brother was stronger and bigger than himself. 
He knew that they should been even closer than they already were, but the jealousy was like a rift between them. Asafa climbed even closer to Simba to support Simba even more, he had never cared about those matters, he always loved his brother and cared for him, even though they competed in most things. Simba, Asafa, I found you. Suddenly the voice of a bird was heard as Azu flew close to them. Hold on, your father is on his way. He shouted as he flew back to Mufasa to show where they were. In less than half a minute, a fierce lion jumped straight into the stampede of wildebeest. As Mufasa tried to close in on his sons, he fell down a few times as he crashed into wildebeests. Both Simba and Asafa felt their hearts hurt at this, they had never seen their invincible father fall before and look so helpless. Dodd father Mufasa stood up again and rushed on top of the stone beneath the tree. Take Simba, I'll cling to your back. Asafa shouted as he saw, in a split second, the hint of uncertainty in his father's eyes on who to pick up. Mufasa didn't speak further and picked up Simba with his mouth, and Asafa jumped onto his back and held on with his dear life. Mufasa tried running with the flow of the stampede, but even then he fell down, he knew that if this continues they would all die. After struggling, they finally reached one side of the rift and started to climb the ravine wall. Mufasa put down Simba on a safe spot on the wall where Asafa also jumped off. Sadly it was too small for Mufasa to stop, so he had to climb on. The wall was steep, and it was hard for Mufasa to climb. Seeing their father climb on, Simba was worried and found another place to also climb the wall. Asafa couldn't leave as his eyes refused to leave his father, out of worry and fear. In the end, Asafa saw Mufasa almost reach for the top, and there he saw a pair of familiar claws rip into the paws of his father. He couldn't hear him, but he saw Mufasa speak, then he saw the complete shock in his father's eyes, before the claws holding on to his father pushed him off. In that split second that his father was pushed off, the world seemed to stop. Asafa saw how his father was falling backwards unnaturally for a lion. As his body slowly descended towards the stampede. The mighty roar of his father seemed to echo inside his chest, for what seemed to be infinity as if electrified, Asafa just stood there, his body shaking in fear. Because of where he was, he couldn't see who had pushed off his father, but he already knew. He recognized those paws. He stood there for a couple of minutes before the stampede started to recede, then he climbed down and started walking to where he had seen his father fall. He couldn't see clearly because of all the dust, but he knew the directions. Asafa felt like his mind was empty, he wanted to shout for his father, but he couldn't find his voice. He kept walking until he stumbled into the lame body of his father, and he knew instantly what had transpired. Fa fa fath, he couldn't even call for his father as he felt a huge clump inside his chest. The big body of the lion that could fight hundreds of hyenas, the strongest person he knew. The one that held up the sky and saved the day whenever here Simba caused trouble. The source of power and security for the Pride Lands was down on the ground, looking so weak, breathless. Tears fell down Asafa's eyes as he snuggled into his father's face. Dodd. Asafa heard the voice of his brother echo throughout the ravine, yet he couldn't bring himself to say anything, he laid there weeping. Gallop 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 another wildebeest suddenly appeared jumping over both Mufasa and Asafa before running along, it seemed to be the slowest of its kin. Dad. Simba had found his way to them as he walked around the body of his father, not understanding why he wasn't moving. Asafa he whispered, hoping to found answers from his brother, but Asafa was just weeping. Simba came closer to the head of Mufasa. Dad. He whispered carefully, as to not harm or disturb his father. Dad come on, you gotta get up he said as he tried to lift Mufasa's head. Come on dad, we gotta go home. He said as he carefully pushed his dad, but it seemed like he was slowly and unwillingly understanding what happened. Suddenly Simba started to panic slightly as he looked around. He LP shouted as he was starting to realize that his dad was gone. Asafa suddenly got a powerful headache, and he started to regain the all his memories of the Lion King, all of which had been blurry before. It came rushing back. As if the trauma had forced his brain to remember. Before he remembered some details that were hazy. But now it was all cleared, although some details had been forgotten because of the passage of time, the trauma of today had awakened most of the memories. But none of that mattered to Asafa as right now, this was real to him, and he had lost his father. The rest was very hazy to Asafa, as he could barely register that his brother was present, he kept weeping. 
He help somebody anybody Simba once more tried shouting for help. Realizing that no help was coming, Simba walked back and laid beside his brother in the embrace of his father, and also wept. Simba and Asafa laid there as they could still feel the warmth of their father body. After laying in their father's embrace for a few moments, they heard the footsteps of someone closing on them. You too what have you done a sinister voice said. Their uncle Scar had appeared in front of them. Uncle. Simba cried. Asafa was still in his days as Simba and Scar spoke. He couldn't register the words they spoke, but it seemed like they had spoken of her good well before Simba nudged Asafa and pushed him up. Asafa saw him crying. We need to go. He said devastated. Asafa's first instinct was to return to the pride, but seeing the shadow of his uncle behind them, he knew that they would die before they reached back. Simba nodded before running towards the directions away from the pride cliff. As Asafa ran with Simba, he felt more and more guilty. If I had remembered, or at least disobeyed Scar and climbed up from the beginning, then none of this would have happened. If only I followed my gut feeling. I could have prevented this so easily as Safa thought. He strongly felt that this was his fault, his presence should have stopped his father from dying, but it didn't as for Simba, he also felt guilty, Scar had instilled in him that everything was their fault. Mufasa died because of them. Three hyenas appeared beside Scar as the two princes ran away. Kill them. He commanded coldly. The three hyenas happily chased after the twins. Simba and Asafa soon realized that they were being chased, so they ran even faster. Soon they came to a cliff, where dangerous-looking branches and bushes of thorns laid beneath it. Both Asafa and Simba looked back and realized they had no other path to take, they looked at each other one last time before jumping off the cliff. The hyenas appeared where Simba and Asafa had just stood. What should we do? One of the hyenas asked, looking down the cliff. We have to finish the job. One commented. They are as good as finished anyways. The third said looking down. From this fall they must have died, even if they survived the fall, they won't survive out there. One for them agreed. Looking toward the horizon, they only saw a desert. Let's go back and say we killed them. The hyenas agreed. They couldn't really be bothered with the business of lions, they only had an agreement with Scar for mutual benefits. The twins barely survived the fall, and even then the adrenaline kept them from resting as they kept running for their lives. It was easier for Asafa as his body was stronger, and he had way more stamina. But his mental fatigue was overwhelming, and as they kept walking for many hour on end. He finally found Simba fall of exhaustion. At that point, Asafa also fell down because of the mental exhaustion. By the time he had woken up, he found that he was under the shade of a tree, beside him was Simba still unconscious. Timon and Pumbaha. Asafa realized as he saw them standing with their back against him whispering something. But Asafa heard them loud and clearly. Timon, are you sure about this, they might eat us, maybe we can keep one and throw away the other. Pumba, haven't you ever heard of the proverb, two is better than one? What's a proverb? It's when you professionally explain something. I see, then can you proverb them to not eat us? How hard is it to trick some cubs? Just give them some candy and tell them to get in the ride. That makes sense. Pumba said. Of course it makes sense, I'm the brains between us after all. Uh. Let's wake them up and teach them how to live life like a peaceful herbivore. As they turned around to wake up the lion cubs, they found one of the cubs already awake, just a step behind them, listening in. Aya Aya it's going to eat us, eat Pumba first he is fat and juicy, both Timon and Pumba hugged each other and shook. Erm who are you? Asafa asked. I'm pro and he's verb. Timon said while shaking, not realizing the words he said. Pro and verb. Sounds tasty. Asafa said while liking his lips. Pumps passed out. Pumba. Timon jumped on top of him in worry. Suddenly Simba started to wake up because of all the commission, as he saw his brother, a pig and a meerkat. What's going on? Simba said. Timon looked at Simba confused, Simba's voice sounded so depressed. You okay, kid? I guess so Simba said as he stood and walked past his brother with his head down. He seems blue. Timon commented. I'd say brownish gold. Pumba woke up and said. No no no, I mean he's depressed. Oh. Where are you going? Both Pumba and Timon asked at the same time. I don't know Simba said as he continued walking away. Why are you two out here? Pumba asked. We are outcasts. 
Asafa said as he started following his brother, after all, brothers should be united. Ah. So are we but what's keeping you down? Pumba asked worriedly. Nothing, he's at the top of the food chain. Taiman said while laughing out loudly, hoping to brighten up Simba but it didn't work. Simba, we should rest up here before moving on. Asafa said to Simba as Simba had already started walking towards the desert. Oh okay, Simba said as he turned back towards the shades under the tree. Taiman and Pumba looked at each other, feeling sorry for the cubs. Hey kids anything we can do to help brighten your day? Pumba asked. Not unless you can change the past. Simba said. In times like this my buddy time and usually proverbs, you have to put your behind, in the past in front of you. Pumba said trying to share some wisdom. No 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 you amateur, lie down before you hurt yourself. Taiman said as he stepped forward. Asafa stood beside Simba, but Taiman pushed himself between. It's, put your past behind you. Look kids, bad things happen, and you can't do anything about it, right? Right. Simba said. Smack wrong. When the world turns on you, you turn your back on the world. Taiman said with passion. Asafa had his paw on his head, wondering why he got the smack when Simba was the one that gave the wrong answer. But before he could comment, Taiman hugged both Simba and Asafa close to him. What do you mean? Simba asked, finally a little curious. When bad things happen, there is something you can do about it. Taiman said, waiting for them to take the bait. What is it? Simba said, by this time, even Pumba had arrived behind them, listening in closely on the wisdom of Taiman. You pretend like nothing happened. Yes, what you don't know about, can't hurt you. What bad event? It didn't happen. But it did happen. Simba tried to argue. Do you remember the time I bit you? Taiman asked, interrupting Simba. No, exactly. It didn't happen. No worries. But how do I do that? How do I just not worry? Simba asked, trying to understand. Repeat after me, Hakuna Matata. What? Simba said, Hakuna Matata. Asafa repeated. Hakuna Matata, it means no worries. Pumba clarified. What a wonderful phrase time and suddenly started singing. Hakuna Matata. Ain't no passing craze it means no worries for the rest of your days, it's our problem free philosophy Hakuna Matata. Both Asafa and Simba was taken back by the fact that the pig and meerkat started singing and bringing them into the forest. But somehow, it did relieve the stress and guilt that Asafa felt, and looking at his brother, it seemed to work for him as well. Suddenly, Taiman hugged Pumba close to him and sang. Why? When he was a young warthog, when I was a young warthog. Pumba repeated. He found his aroma lacked a certain appeal, he could clear the savanna after every meal, I'm a sensitive soul, though I seem thick-skinned, and it hurt that my friends never stood downwind, Simba seemed very intrigued by what had made Taiman and Pumba outcasts, so he listened closely. And oh, the shame, he was ashamed. Thought of change in my name, oh, what's in a name? And I got downhearted, how did you feel? Every time that I Pumba. Not in front of the kids. Oh sorry Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase Hakuna Matata. Ain't no passing craze, it means no worries Asafa finally sang. For the rest of your days. Simba continued, finding his courage after his brother. Yeah, sing it, kid. It's our problem free philosophy Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata Hakuna Matata Hakuna Matata Hakuna, it means no worries for the rest of your days, it's our problem free philosophy, Hakuna Matata Taiman, Pumba, Simba and Asafa sang as Taiman and Pumba showed the way to their new home. Asafa sat beneath a tree with Pumba. Simba and Taiman then ran away to eat and compete about something. Kid, how do you feel being with us? Pumba asked. Both he and Taiman had taken a great liking to the cubs they had found. As for Asafa, he thought about it. He knows that the life he is currently living was a story, a movie in his past life, but that doesn't change the fact that he is currently a lion. He came to realize that many things wasn't shown in the kid's movie. He, as a lion had seen his lion pride bring back a half-dead gazelle, just to show the cubs how to kill it properly. He had eaten and tasted every part of a dead animal. His father had gone out to pee around the pride lands too, so that the smell keeps other lions away from their land. Fact is, he is a full-blown lion, and he couldn't help but to come to terms with that, as he raised his palm and pushed out his sharp claws. I will grow stronger and faster than my brother as we grow, but also stronger than any other lion, because of the gift I received. Asafa thought. Kid. 
Pumba asked as he noticed that Asafa was lost in his thoughts. Ah sorry, I'm just slightly worried. Asafa said, about what? Pumba wanted to help the cubs to adjust as much as possible. I am very thankful to you two for taking us in, and we're doing our best to adjust, but the truth is, we are meat eaters, and it might be bad for us to live only on bugs, Asafa honestly replied his worries. Ah, not that I want to kill or eat anyone, it's just what I am. Asafa said as he saw Pumba worried. Oh I might have a solution to that. Pumba said as he stood up. Follow me. Pumba said happily as he started walking towards a direction. What about Taiman and Simba? Hakuna Matata. Pumba said as Asafa followed him. After walking throughout the forest, they finally arrived in a clearing with a huge lake that was connected to a waterfall and a river. Learn to hunt in the water, there's lots of meat and fish. Pumba said happily that he found a solution. That might actually work. Don't cats love fish? It might be extra work to fill my stomach, but at least I won't be making time and Pumba uncomfortable. Asafa thought. Well then, last in is bacon. Asafa said as he jumped into the lake. Ah cheating. Pumba shouted as he followed. Asafa and Simba became close with Taiman and Pumba in no time, they enjoyed their time together and had fun every day, forgetting their troubles and responsibilities. Before they knew, a year had passed by. I think I won that one. Taiman proclaimed, but Taiman, didn't all three of us eat more than you? You only ate 34 snails, we ate over 70. Pumba asked. Pumba, this is why I am the brain in our group. Look at our size differences. Taiman said as he patted Pumba's big stomach. 10 snails for me, is like 100 for you. So I ate more than 300 hundred. Taiman said with utmost confidence. Oh I see. Pumba said. All I hear is fart noises, I ate the most, so I'm the official master of snail eating. I'm the snail eating king. Asafa said with a grin, but as he said king at the end, he remembered what had happened the year earlier Asafa, you only ate 79 snails, I ate over 300, I'm the king in this forest. No way, that's cheating, I ate 68, that's like 10,000 because I'm a kid. Simba tried reasoning. That makes sense. Pumba said. No no no, it's not about age, it's all about size. Simba, my little furry carnivore friend, listen closely, snails are like stars, the bigger the sky, the more stars. You stomach is bigger so it can hold more stars. Taiman explained his rocket science. Oh Simba wasn't so sure about that. Asafa looked up to the clear, dark sky. The sun had set and the stars and moon were shining brightly, he couldn't help but to feel nostalgic. Just as they were about to arrive at their sleeping area, Asafa stopped. Sorry guys, need to use the men's room, Asafa said with his typical grin. Ah don't be too late Mr. Second Place, Taiman said as he waved him away. Asafa turned around and his grin disappeared, and a slightly sad one took over. He walked towards an open place and laid on the ground, looking up to the sky. Even though Scar killed father I could have prevented it with just little effort, am I also to blame? Asafa thought as he looked up to the stars. He had been feeling very guilty about what had happened, and he knew Simba also did, but the difference is that Simba had nothing to feel guilty about. Asafa had played with the thought of telling him that Scar killed their father, but how would that help Simba? He's just a kid and by now, Scar had probably already filled the Pride Lands with his army of hyenas. Simba couldn't return as he'd die before he could even reach there. This was Asafa's conscious reasoning, but unconsciously, the real reason he hadn't told Simba was because he was afraid that his brother would in the end leave him and return. Asafa knew that the day would come when Simba would be cleared of his crime, and return as the rightful king, but Asafa wasn't without guilt, so he believed that he couldn't return, how could he face everybody? Sai, father, I'm sorry. Asafa said as he looked up at the stars. He couldn't help but to reminisce about the last night he had with his father. I wonder how disappointed you'd feel if you saw me now. He couldn't help but to think. His destiny was obvious to everyone, he would one day become the brother of the king, and the strongest lion and protector of the pride lands. It was obvious since his birth, instead, he is here in shame, never able to return. His ear twitched as he heard someone coming near. Looking back he found Simba. You think dad is looking over us? He asked as he stopped beside Asafa, looking at the stars as well. Maybe but he would probably not like what he sees. This is our own fault, we are the reason that dad died, we can no longer return. 
Simba said, but this time he had come to terms with this, and it didn't sadden him as much as it did a year ago. Maybe Asafa said, not daring to look into his brother's eyes out of guilt. Simba, I want to be alone for a while okay, but you know where you have me Timon and Pumba as well. Simba said as he turned around. Asafa laid where he was, staring at the stars and enjoying the alone time, until his ears picked up movement from the bushes. The sound was very weak, but Asafa had superior hearing, sight, smell and other senses that were above that of a lion's, and therefore he could pick it up. He instantly understood that this wasn't his friends, as their movements wouldn't be so careful and silent. Just as he turned around, a black shadow pounced towards him, but as it neared close, it suddenly stopped itself. Asafa finally saw what it was, a small black panther, only slightly larger than himself. She had abruptly stopped and looked at him with wide eyes in shock. As if she was about to eat her next meal, but misjudged the size of her food as it was almost as big as her. Gulperm she started looking around trying to find excuses. Asafa just stood there looking at her, still not understanding what's happening. Sorry about that, I I thought you were food forgiveness is the medicine to all evil, no. She said as she hurriedly turned around and ran into the bushes again. Why wait who are you? Asafa shouted as he followed. She seemed like a young panther, that had almost reached adulthood, Asafa followed, but soon found that she had disappeared, so he tried finding her smell. Before he could continue his plans he heard subtle sounds from above, so he looked up and found her hiding on one of the branches. Aye, you found me. She looked shocked as their eyes met. Wait, why are you running away? He asked as she was about to run again. She stopped and looked confused. Why wouldn't I run away? She asked him with a brow raised. Asafa found himself speechless oh right, panthers or leopards are loners, while lions live in groups. Her first instinct was probably to hide herself after being found out Asafa realized. Because we are similar so we could be friends. He said but not really convinced himself. He was just curious about this panther. Is that so she said skeptical of his words. Soon she climbed down and sat in front of him, and they just stared at each other. You're weird. She said after observing his looks. Thanks. So who are you? Asafa asked looking at her. Although she was a black panther, you could still see a shade of darker spots on her back. But her head and limbs were completely black. I'm Imani, and what's your name weird panther? She asked back. I'm Asafa wait no, I'm not a panther. He explained with a tilted head. Her suspicion levels were even further raised as she looked at him. They were very similar, although he wasn't black, nor did he have spots on his body, and his head had lots of hair. I'm a lion. Asafa said seeing her suspicion. Lion. She exclaimed in shock as she jumped back, slightly worried. What's wrong? Asafa asked seeing her so worried. You tricked me so you can kill, how evil. She said with blame in her tone. Kill you, why would I do that? Asafa asked weirded out by her eccentric personality. Mom used to warn me about your kind, you look like us, but are always in gangs and kill us because we're rival in the food tree. Chain. Pyramid scheme. The more she spoke, the more unsure she became as she couldn't remember the words of her mother. Oh I see, well I have no gang of lions, sure you don't. She said while looking around for any signs of evil spawns that might come out of hiding. I don't. Asafa said rolling his eyes. Sigh, what did I expect, you look so dumb. Asafa said as he turned around and started walking back to where he was stargazing. As for Amani, she looked aghast at him, not understanding why he isn't trying to kill her. Wait, it has to be a plot, yes, lions are probably even sneakier than us panthers, I won't get tricked. She thought but as she saw him really leaving, her curiosity made her follow. Why are you following me? Asafa asked annoyed. I'm not, I'm just walking this way as well. She said in a huff, annoyed that he would assume such dumb things. Sure. Asafa said not convinced by her. Hey. Evil spawn why don't you believe me? I would never follow you. She said as she ran up to him in anger. Yes yes sure I believe you. Asafa said trying to get rid of her. Grrrr you really are an evil spawn. She said without hiding her irritation. Go, go away. Asafa said waving his paw at her as if shooing away a wild cat. Why why you? How rude. She barked in anger. His actions made her want to stick to him even more, so he'd be annoyed to death. Asafa just sighed and continued walking to his stargazing spot. 
As he laid down and stared at the sky full of stars, he got lost in thought. As for Imani, she hid in the bush closest to him, both aware of each other. What a weirdo, why should he lay relaxed in such an open place, isn't it better to hide like this? She whispered not understanding his behavior. What do you want? Asafa couldn't contain himself, he wanted to spend some time alone yet behind him a black panther not much older than him was hiding and staring at him, totally destroying his peace of mind. Humph, nothing to do with you, this is my resting place. She said from the bushes. Fine. Asafa said with clear annoyance. But why aren't you black? And why don't you have spots? She finally asked. There's a difference between lions and panthers. You guys are very sneaky while we are strategic and strong. So our bodies are different. Asafa tried to explain. But talk. She said. But talk. What does that mean? He asked not understanding her. But you're talking shit. You're asking for a fight aren't you? Asafa angrily stood up. Haha I'm bigger than you, lions must be overrated, come here and let me slap cough couch, come here and let me teach you a lesson. She said arrogantly. Are you fully grown? Asafa stopped in his tracks and asked. No not yet, I'm still a teenager. We panthers grow even more than this. She said proudly. After all, she had never seen a lion, so she thought Asafa was fully grown, considering that he was about 80% her size. But I'm not grown at all, I just started puberty. Asafa said with a grin. He felt like a checkmate at her. Her surprise couldn't be hidden. No way, you're still a child, she asked surprised. Well I wouldn't say a child, more like then if this is your baby phase, then how big do you get when you're an adult? I'm not a baby. I thought that animals that live in groups are smaller and weaker, she said in wonder. Hey listen to me, I'm not a baby. Asafa tried to correct her. Then how big do you get? She asked, totally ignoring him. Asafa's claws came out of his pawns. He was seriously pondering whether he should just get rid of this weird black panther. Hey answer my question, don't you know it's rude to be rude to your elders? She said with haughtiness in her tone. Her demeanor changed now that she knows that he is a baby. You are quite shameless aren't you? Asaf said, sounding exhausted. She walked up to him and gave a slap on his back. Listen up kid, it seems like no one thought you manners, from now on you can call me Teak No, call me master, I'm going to teach you all I know. She said with newfound pride. After all, she is the elder around here, so she have to have the patience to overlook a child's misbehaving. Asafa just stood there, with his mouth slightly agape. He couldn't fathom his this panther could be so shameless. Asafa, are you here? Suddenly Pumba's voices was heard as he, Timon and Simba arrived. Instinctively, Imani got ready to fight for her life as she thought that Asafa had really tricked her, and that his pride had come to eat her. I knew it you tricked me huh? I didn't now there is food delivery here. She changed her tone as she saw the fat and juicy Pumba arriving here with the side dish Timon. Both Timon and Pumba felt instinctive fear for their lives, as they laid eyes on the black panther that stood beside Asafa. They're not food, they're my friends. Asafa said as his paw slapped her head to get her out of her predatory stare. Hey Asafa, who might this lovely, not hungry looking canine be? Timon asked with a shaky voice. Maybe it was a bad idea to pick up two lions after all. Pumba whispered with shaking legs. What an ugly lion. Simba said. How rude, brat, slapping your master. Do you want me to beat you up? Imani shouted in anger at Asafa. Jeez, calm down everyone. This is Pumba, Timon and Simba, my family, and guys this is Amani, a strange stranger. Asafa introduced so that there won't be a misunderstanding. Ah, so that's how it is. Timon said as he came to realization. He said family. Pumba said with a tear in his eye. Simba still looked unconcerned. We got worried about you kid, you were gone for a long time. Pumba explained why they came searching for him. Sigh, let's return then. Asafa said and as they started walking back. After walking a few meters, Pumba started getting the shivers. Looking back his heart almost stopped. Behind them, the Black Panther was following. Hey Asafa, your friend he couldn't continue because of instinctive fright. Hey, why are you still following me? Asafa couldn't help but to let his annoyance be known. I'm you master now, so of course I need to follow you. She said while looking away. Fine, but if you try to eat us, Asafa and Simba will show you a lion's true might. Timon said with guts. Hey you're also a lion. 
I thought you were a spotless leopard. She said as she happily walked up to Simba to observe him. What's a leopold? Simba asked. That's like a lion, but with spots and things like that. Taiman used his rocket science to explain. Oh for some reason, Imani also joined their group, and she was very adamant about being a Safa's master, although he refused her every time. In another two years, the lions had grown enough mane to show that they were young lions. Their group of five had become very family-like. Whenever they slept under the big tree, Imani would climb up and sleep on one of the branches. Asafa had found her climbing abilities very impressive, so he started copying her, and with his superior strength, his climbing abilities started rivaling her. As for Simba, although he also copied and could climb tree, his agility was a far cry from hers, and couldn't climb as good. Huh, where's Asafa? Imani asked Wonder OMG as she woke up and found the trio having another contest. He gone for another week. Simba answered. A, again. Why didn't he tell me? She complained. Asafa had started disappearing for one week every month. This had been ongoing for five months now, and no one knew where he went. TSK, it seems like I need to teach him more manners when he returns. She said annoyed. As for Asafa, he was on his way back to the Pride Lands. Five months ago, his guilt felt so bad that he secretly returned just to take a look. And things were getting bad. In just three years since they escaped, everything had fallen so low. In anger, he secretly found a group of scouting hyenas and attacked them. Although he hadn't fully grown, he still was as strong as a normal adult male lion. Which made it possible to fight those five hyenas. He got seriously harmed in that fight and gained a small scar on his arm, but in the end he killed the five hyenas before escaping. When he returned home his companions got worried about him, but he wouldn't tell them what happened. Since then he went back to the Pride Lands to hunt hyenas, but he himself was unaware that this act was actually developing his hunting and fighting skills. Rower another attack. How incompetent can you be? Scar shouted at the lions and hyenas as they had gathered. No one answered him as they knew answering would just make Scar even angrier. Did you at least find out who the attacker is? Scar calmed down and asked the lionesses. It's a male lion from outside the Pride Lands, we don't know his identity Sarabi spoke out, she knew that if it was someone else, Scar might become even angrier. Increase the amount of scouts. Make sure you guard this territory better. Scar spoke with an eerie calm. Yes my king. The hyenas spoke. As Asafa arrived in the Pride Lands, he was surprised to find the smell of lions not long after he enters the lands. This was unusual as they usually weren't this far out to hunt. Asafa took precaution and chose a longer path where he could more easily hit his traces. As he got closer to his central pride lands, he started searching and hunting for hyenas. But to his surprise, their groups had doubled in size. It seemed like they got wary of him. Hiding on a tall tree, Asafa silently listened in on a passing group of hyenas. Ahaskar got so angry, scary scary. One hyena chuckled. The best part is did you see the faces of the lions Guahaha don't you just want to kill them all as you see their expressions. The Safa just listened in on their banter as he silently watched them from above. He closed his eyes and tried listening further to see if there were any more close by, but he couldn't hear anyone else. Once he opened his eyes again, his predatory gaze didn't leave the biggest hyena. Should I attack should I not? He pondered, but his body was in perfect stance to pounce, although he was debating in his mind, it seemed like he had already unconsciously made a decision. Just as they passed under the tree, Asafa moved. Using his legs he picked himself down towards the biggest hyena, and before they could react, a lion had landed on their leader Asafa bit right through the neck of the hyena and killed him, and before they could react, he slashed his sharp claws towards the closest hyena, blinding him. Only then did they react, but Asafa was faster and blinded another. Now he had decreased their fighting power to seven hyenas. They surrounded Asafa and used their usual tactics to attack him from behind, as a few of them distracted him from the front. Hyenas have a cruel method of biting and dripping of the balls of lions from behind. This is to weaken the lion and harm him, but this also has the effect of stopping him from reproducing if he survives the encounter. Asafa was aware of their tactics and used the tree to his his behind, and just as one of the hyenas in front of him was about to faint attack from the front, Asafa attacked him, catching him off guard. Asafa bit through his neck and then slashed another hyena. 
He tried backing up to the tree again, but got jumped by another hyena that bit his shoulder. Asafa didn't care and instead pounced the hyena he had just slashed and killed him as well. The fight continued, the hyenas died one by one. And when there was only three of them left they tried escaping. But would Asafa let them? He caught up to another one and bit right through his spine, paralyzing the hyena. Just as he was about to chase the others, he heard the sound of three lions roaring in the distance as they came as backup. So Asafa turned around and was about to escape the scene. The hyena that got paralyzed from the spine down, realized what's going down and bit onto Asafa's leg, hindering him from running away. Asafa felt the pain of the hyena's biting power, and tried to release his leg with a kick, but the hyena refused to let go. So Asafa turned around and bit down on his neck killing him. As he was about to run away a horrible pain assaulted the leg which the hyena had bitten into. Hyenas have one of the most powerful biting forces in the world, and the hyena had cracked the bone in his leg. Realizing that he wouldn't be able to run away, Asafa hurried to the big tree he had hidden on before and climbed up. Although lions can usually climb small and easy to climb trees, they are not capable enough to climb this type of high, hard to climb tree, only monkeys can do that, so he assumed that the lions wouldn't expect him to be high there. He silently laid down on the highest branch and steadied his breathing. Soon the three lions arrived at the scene, and the two hyenas that had run away joined them. He was here. The bastard attacked us all and took us by surprise. The hyena cried out. The lions didn't answer, and simply started sniffing the dead bodies. Asafa was watching them closely and to his surprise, he found two of the lionesses familiar. Ayana, Nala to think that you've grown so much. Asafa thought to himself as he watched them silently. All lions of Pride Lands had come to detest Scar and his rule, but there was nothing they could do about it. There were no adult males of royal lineage that could overtake Scar. Nala and Ayana were two of the lionesses that found pleasure in the fact that an unknown lion had come to their territory to attack hyenas. Although they did find it annoying since it's their instinct to protect their territory, and the fact that an outsider had come to their territory to kill. But their pleasure in the destruction of hyenas is greater than their will to protect the lands they once cherished. Scar had ruined it all. Food has become harder to come by, unjust rule, the hyenas are out of control. All this has even led to less rain on the land which had led to less growth, that's the worst thing that can happen, as the herbivore will then move away. That fact in addition to the fact that hyenas have been overconsuming, has led to the dire state they are in today. Nala and Ayana are quite different in personalities, although both rejoiced in the harm that has befallen hyenas, Nala would still attack the intruder with all her might. Ayana however is more laid back, she'd close one eye if it benefits her. Enemy of an enemy, is an ally. But this was unknown to Asafa, and that's why his heart stopped beating for a second, when Ayana instinctively looked up and met his eyes. At that moment, a surge of emotions drowned Asafa. Would she recognize him? Would they attack him? Would the truth come out? But Ayana simply turned her head away as if she hadn't seen anything. Let's go southeast, I think I got his trace. Ayana shouted, and they all hurried after her. Although Ayana decided to give the intruder a helping hand, she couldn't help but to frown, she felt like she recognized the male lion in the tree, although it was hard to see because of all the leaves, and although she only had eye contact with him for a second, she couldn't put her claw on it, but something was eerily familiar. As they ran away, she couldn't help but to look back one last time towards the tree, but it was impossibly to see anything because of the leaves. Nala noticed that Ayana was frowning and noticed her gaze towards the tree they had passed under. And she also looked back with furrowed brows. Then they continued onward. She didn't recognize. Asafa felt a hint of relief, but at the same time he felt slightly sad because of it as well. Maybe on some level, my heart longs to go back Asafa realized as he looked towards the pride rock in the distance. After a while he climbed down and hurried back where he came from, but sadly his leg was really bad, so he couldn't run as fast as he wanted. This time it was a close call, maybe I should wait with coming back here for a while. Asafa thought in worry. It didn't take long for Asafa's leg to heal, much faster than what is normal for lions. It took a few days longer to return home because of the injury, but by the time he had returned, it had almost healed completely. Simba, Imani, Taiman and Pumba got slightly worried when he was later than usual, but got relieved when they saw him. To think that you'd leave again without telling your master. I think I should teach you more manners. 
Imani shouted furiously. But her words fell on deaf ears as Asafa just walked past them. Sorry guys, I need rest. Asafa said as he continued back to their sleeping place. Huh? He seems blue? Pumba said. More like brown. Time incorrected. But you said that blue means Pumba was cut off. Pumba, Pumba, my old friend, it's in these times we shouldn't worry about specifics. Timon said. Oh. Pumba understood. Simba walked past them and followed Asafa. Imani was about to follow, but Timon stood in her way. We should probably give the brothers some time to talk. DSK, fine, but then I'm beating him up. Simba arrived to see his brother laying down with shut eyes, but he knew that Asafa didn't have the time to actually fall asleep. Asafa, you leave without telling us anything, fine, we understand, but then you come back harmed, you think we'll just keep silent. Simba said. If his brother is going through something, he wants to be there for him. Hey, do you really have to put up walls with us? With me? Simba continued. Asafa heard the hurt in Simba's voice when he said that, so he opened his eyes to look at him. Simba it's not that I'm putting up walls, it's never mind, you wouldn't understand. Asafa said as he stood up and tried to leave. After all, how could he explain that he'd been back to the Pride Lands and hunted the hyena army of their evil uncle? How could he explain that the drive to do that is because of the guilt he feels? How should he explain that Simba isn't really in the wrong, it was the plot of their uncle? But in the end, Asafa had the ability to change the outcome, but he didn't, so he also carries guilt. Moreover, Asafa himself has conflicting emotions that he hadn't really resolved. What should he do when Simba inevitably returns to the Pride Lands and takes his place as king? Can he ever show his face there? What would his father say if he aware of everything Asafa knew would he despise him? What wouldn't I understand? Simba got annoyed. His brother tells him that he isn't putting up walls even though he clearly does. Then he goes about and tells him that he wouldn't understand. Simba, you've got your place in this place, but I Asafa turned back to his brother and spoke, but he couldn't finish. You think I have a place in this world? We are the same. We're both Simba tried to reason with him. Simba. Asafa roared slightly to get him off his back. Asafa turned around and angrily left. Simba also turned around and went the other way, clearly frustrated with his brother. They are in this together, what's the point of keeping secrets between them? Simba felt angry and sad at that, after all his brother is the only kin he has left. The trio that stayed behind found Simba returning with a scowl on his face. Ah it didn't go as planned I see, what's going on? Timon asked nonchalantly, but on the inside he was worried sick. Not now, I need to think. Simba said before walking off. Geez, it's like he ate a bad bug or something. Pumba commented. So this is the rebellious phase of a teenager huh? Imani said. Oh, I get it now. Timon said as if he had a brilliant idea. What? Both Pumba and Imani turned towards him. Don't you guys see? Look at their mane, it's growing rapidly, they are in their teens, that explains the attitude. Timon said. I just said that. Imani said deadpan. This fight between the brother was the first real fight they've had since they left the Pride Lands three years ago. And neither truly spoke about the fight again, they buried their discussion deep and pretended that they hadn't fought. It wasn't until a year later when Asafa restarted his hyena hunt, that he found Simba on his way to the Pride Lands. So you were really going back to the Pride Lands? Simba said, his suspicions proven right. Both their manes had grown enough that they could be considered real male lions. Asafa was bigger and had a much fuller mane, but even Simba was big for his size. The Lion King was often chosen because of their physical strength and wisdom, and the Pride Royal lineage always produced the biggest and strongest lions, so Simba was bigger than most lions his age. But even then he hadn't fully matured yet. How did you know? Asafa just asked, he didn't try to deny it, since it was pointless. Ever since. Our fight last year, I was worried about you so when you restarted your monthly trip, I tried to follow you took me a while, but I figured it out. I. I'm sorry for keeping it from you. Asafa said. I just don't get why. Simba asked, trying to understand. It's complicated. Asafa said, he didn't want to tell his brother that the Pride Lands had fallen, their uncle Scar has brought it down with hyenas. That talk again fine, I won't get involved anymore. But know this Asafa, I don't think it's good for you to return there, after all Simba didn't continue. 
But his eyes said it all, we're criminals, we no longer belong to that place. That's what it said. I'm not going back to return, I have no place there anymore. But there's something else, personal Asafa explained. Simba nodded and returned. Asafa kept going to hunt the hyenas, but he was way more careful after the incident last year. Hakuna Matata. No worries. For the rest of your dice it's a problem-free, philosophy. Hakuna Matata. The group of five sang along as they walked through the forest. They had been out doing the usual. Ah this is the good life, I hope nothing ever changes. Simba said as they reached their new dwelling place. It's as time and one said, the whole forest is their bed, they can go wherever, whenever. As for Simba, his voice had changed considerably. His mane has become full. Don't worry, in this place of Hakuna Matata, nothing ever changes. Taiman said, proud over the fact that they lived a life of no responsibilities. Who'd ever think that predators like us would build a family with food like them? Imani said nonchalantly. Hey. I'm not food, I'm a fine dish. Umba said while showing his big juicy bacon. Pumba that's not the problem here. Taiman rolled his eyes. You're right Imani, Taiman be careful so we don't accidentally eat you in our sleep, Asafa said, while showing his big fangs with a grin. Taiman got shivers up his spine and climbed atop Simba's mane. SS Simba your brother is at it again. He said shivering. Asafa had grown the biggest, Imani had become a full-fledged adult. Simba had grown bigger than her. Taiman and Pumba who led their group of five suddenly stopped, making Imani walk into them, and Simba into her. Hey why did you suddenly stop like that Imani complained. Is that, what I think it is? Pumba said. We should probably run right. Taiman answered. Yee. Wait don't we have two lions and one weirdo with you s, Pumba realized. Who's the weirdo? Imani got angry. Both Taiman and Pumba hurriedly ran back behind Asafa and the gang. That's when they saw what had scared the two, it was a green snake as long as a human arm. It laid unconscious in the middle of their path, it had a scar above its one eye, and it looked quite young. Simba. I chose you, go eat it. Taiman shouted as he pointed at the snake. You know, you go eat it. Simba passed the roll to Imani. No it might be poisonous, Asafa you go eat it. She denied hurriedly. Snakes are sneaky and she didn't want to deal with them. Don't wanna, Pumba you go fart on it. Asafa passed the responsibility to Pumba. Wait, is it even alive? Taiman said as he picked up a long tree branch and poked it. The snake is probably dead. Should I use him as a scarf? Taiman said as he relaxed and started walking to the snake. As for the snake, he was a young teen had almost died in a fight against a carnivore bird that attacked him. He escaped the bird attack but fell down from the tree that he was on which led to the fact that he fell unconscious. As he heard the commotion made by the five he started waking up, and the first thing he hears is, the snake is probably dead. Should I use him as a scarf? Suddenly the snake erected and showed his fangs in anger. SSSS who dares to make me a scarf he said angrily. Time in that had started walking towards the snake stopped in fright, and when he saw the snake look at him, he fainted. Time in. I'll save you. Pumba shouted in fear as he ran forward, but when he saw the snake, he also fainted. These two are they doing it on purpose? Imani asked. We have him my power levels has risen I see. The snake said proudly. He figured that his last fight must have broken his limits and become more powerful than any snake before him, that's why the red pig and yellow rat died by a simple gaze. You three. If you met me just an hour ago, you'd be able to eat me up, but things have changed. I'll pardon you if you accept me as the king of this forest. Imani just dropped her jaws, she has found someone even more shameless than her. I'll think about it if you can bring those two back to life. Asafa said seriously, with a glint of mischief in his eyes. Simba's eyes just twitched. Bring back to life. The snake repeated, he slithered to the meerkat and swine, looked at them curiously. If I can kill them with one look, then I should be able to bring them back with one touch. He whispered. His tail nudged Taiman a few times, and then Taiman started to awaken. It worked. The snake fell back in fear. I see, my powers are even greater than I originally believed the snake realized. As Taiman awakened, he looked around in confusion, when he realized what has happened here and behind Imani for protection, which awoke Pumba as well. Wah this lord's name is Hamu. What will you say? Will you make me your leader? The snake asked proudly. 
Amazing, you can kill with one gaze and bring back to life with one touch. That means that you're a super snake. Asafa said, amazed. Super snake. Indeed, I like the sound of that. He said proudly. Even lions and panthers seem to adore his greatness. But Simba, have you ever wondered? Asafa suddenly turned to his brother in askance. Wondered what? Simba looked at his skeptically. How a super snake tastes. Asafa said with a bit of drool coming out of his mouth. It was at this point time and Pumba fainted again. Why why you? Don't you dare, I will look at you super hard. The snake shivered and said. Asafa started walking towards the snake. Hamu instantly tried to use his new powers and stare the big lion to death, but it didn't work. What? What did you do to me? Where my powers Hamu shouted in fear. When you almost killed me with your stare, I also awakened superpowers. My power is that I can cut off other superpowers, Asafa said, as his disclosing his last and final card. I see, I lost before I even began. Hamu realized. Asafa why are you teasing this dumb snake, Simba said while rolling his eyes, ready to head on. Don't say that brother you should be the first to congratulate me, after all, if I didn't awaken my powers. We would all have been killed by the super snake. Asafa retarded with a teasing tone. Indeed your brother is right, the lion called Simba Sai, you really are lucky go ahead, kill me. The snake said, finally giving in. Are all snakes brainless? Imani asked while pointing a claw at the snake. Maybe snakes and panthers are related. Asafa asked back. Asafa started walking towards the snake. Hamu closed his eyes and readied himself to get swallowed as all snakes inevitably do. Make sure that you swallow me whole and don't spit out my bones. Hamu said, afraid of the pain of getting chewed on. As he closed his eyes he waited and waited, but he didn't feel any eating being done to him, so he opened one eye carefully to see what's going on. To his surprise, the panther, two lions, pig and rat had disappeared. What? Where did they disappear? Did I awaken another power? But he heard footsteps behind him so he looked back and found that the gang had just walked past him, and were disappearing into the forest. Huh? How dare you not eat the super snake? He shouted as he followed them in anger. Not another one. Asafa said as he noticed the snake coming after them. How obnoxious, what kind of brainless creature follows strangers like that? Imani said, displeased. Hey. Wait. How dare you not eat me? Can't you see that I'm a super snake with with super taste? The snake angrily chased them. How dare they treat him like something that didn't taste good. He is a snake with excellent meat to fat ratio, perfect for grilled meat. Should we just ignore him, maybe he'll go away? Imani asked. Tried that already, didn't work. Asafa said. How when? She asked, they had just met the snake. Way before when you started following us. Asafa said nonchalantly. Disrespectful punk, this is why I chased you, to teach you some manners. You should be eternally thankful to me. If you ever get rich because you inherited your parents' money, then don't forget to pay me back. She was unaware of how close she was to hitting home. Taiman, shouldn't we teach Asafa some manners as well? Pumba said worried. Imani had complained a lot about Asafa's manners, but Pumba wasn't completely aware of what it meant, so he started to get worried. Manners? Can you eat it? Pumba don't waste your time on such trivial things. Taiman waved his argument away. Oh. Imani, I for one agree with you, Asafa is a bit cheeky for his own good. Simba complained. HMPH, of course, why would I otherwise join your group? She said. But all of them had understood that her mother died when she was young, so she must have been very lonely before meeting them. How dare you ignore me, I'm super tasty. Hamu tried once again, and once again he was ignored. A month later, Hamu had integrated himself in the group and become the self-proclaimed lord of their group. Life had only become more joyful since Imani and Hamu had joined. They competed, debated, taught each other but mostly, they were there for each other. Oh I see, that's smart. Hamu exclaimed. And I'm the brain behind it all. Taiman said proudly he explained how he came up with the idea to take in Simba and Asafa as their own. The idea had just hit him from nowhere, as if someone else said it right before he did. And now we don't have to worry about anything anymore with lions guarding us. Pumba added happily. Wahaha brilliant. But where is those three? Hamu asked looking around. Asafa usually goes to the lake to eat by this time, and sometimes Imani follows. 
As for Simba he lays is around, he should be nearby. Time and said as he dug for some juicy, crispy bugs. It's surprising how lazy lions can be. Even more than me. Pumba happily quipped in. Then how about Hamu stopped in his tracks? One of the abilities that snakes have is that they feel the ground vibrate. So they know when other animals are around. What's wrong? Pumba asked noticing Hamu's odd behavior. I can't find the right one, I want one that is crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside. Taiman said as he picked up a bug that didn't seem to satisfy him. Not you, him. Pumba clarified. Oh Hamu suddenly shouted hurry back to the camp. As he turned around and slithered as fast as he can. Pumba and Taiman looked at each other. They don't need another warning as they hurried after the snake. Suddenly from the bushes, a big monstrous gorilla stepped forward looking angry. This gorilla had scars everywhere on his body. He was a warrior since he was a child. He was born a bit bigger and stronger than everyone in his troop family, and dominated with power. He fought the previous Alpha and killed him. And since then he governed with an iron fist. Many tried challenging him, but he violently disposed of all of them. His violent tendencies led to years of dissatisfaction amongst his troop. In the end they all turned on him and attacked him together, but even then they couldn't kill him since he's in his prime. He was unaware of this himself, but being the alpha of his troop wasn't just about physical strength, it was also about popularity. It was common in ape families, for an oppressive leader to be replaced by a weak member that was well liked by everyone. After being chased away, his violent nature couldn't be quenched, so he chose a random direction and went straight ahead for a year, challenging everything in his path. After a year of travel he had arrived in this place, and he had challenged almost every animal, from birds, hyenas, other gorillas and apes, panthers, he even found a lonely old lion that must have been thrown out of his pride, maybe replaced by a stronger, younger one. He killed them all. And now he arrived here hoping for new challenges. But he hadn't found anything yet. Just as he was about to move on from this territory to the next, he heard small animals brazenly move about without worry, in his close approximate. He was already angry about the fact that he found no opponents to fight, and here, was these small creatures with guts big enough to behave so relaxed in his presence. Roar. He roared as he hit his chest with enough power to shake the leaves from the tree above him. Then he sprinted towards the puny creatures. The trio ran for their lives, Taiman was on Pumba's back, and they ran past Hamu. Taiman picked up Hamu as they passed him and then continued running while shouting all they had. Soon they arrived close to where their sleeping area was, and what met them was a lion that was hurrying towards them in worry. Pumba. Taiman what's going on? Sambaya. Hamu shouted in pure bliss that he had befriended an apex predator. Help as they shouted as they ran past him and continued running without looking back. Huh? Simba stopped in his tracks, but it didn't take long for him to understand what's going on. Roar Simba felt the hairs on his body stand up as he noticed the big gorilla arriving in front of him, looking berserk. The gorilla stopped as well as he noticed a lion, that seemed to be mature. Finally, a worthy opponent. Roar. The gorilla showed no intention to be friendly. Simba had play fraught with both Amani and his brother before, but he hasn't been in a serious fight all of his life. So he instantly felt both a rush of adrenaline going through him and a bit nervousness. Yet the male lion instinct of protecting his pride, group and family kicked in, and his fighting will could be see as he roared back. You made a mistake chasing my friends. Simba said with a growl as he started walking around the gorilla, staring right into his eyes, showing his fangs. The gorilla was even slightly bigger than Simba himself. Before the fight could break out, a sudden rustling of leaves could be heard from above. The gorilla that had lots.of experience in fighting instantly looked at UP while sidestepping. He found a black panther leap towards him from a branch up above. Her fangs tried reaching for his neck, but she missed as he moved aside. Before she could even land, the gorilla used both of his heavy arms to punch and push her as hard as he could, resulting in her being punched towards the trunk of the tree. Thud, Imani. Simba shouted in worry as she laid by the tree unconscious. Puny creatures, you better give me a better fight. The gorilla got even angrier that the panther couldn't even warm him up. Simba noticed the overbearing strength of his foe, and couldn't help but to fully focus. Suddenly the gorilla sprinted toward Simba, trying to grab him, but Simba was agile enough to dodge. 
After dodging Simba took his chance to counter and instantly went for the killing bite towards the gorilla's neck from the side. The ape saw it coming and simply raised an arm to his neck. He would have dodged, but he isn't agile enough. Simba bit down on the ape's arm and tried to break his bone with his biting force, but the muscles on the gorilla's forearms seemed to barely be able to stop his brawn from breaking. As soon as Simba bit down, the gorilla instantly waved his arm in response to the bits, trying to throw of the lion. Simba fell down but instantly stood up, he lost his breath slightly as he was thrown to the ground. The gorilla stared angrily at Simba, with his arm bleeding heavily from Simba's bite. You are my greatest foe so far. The gorilla said with a mad grin. He was happy to meet a strong opponent and would be happy to rip him apart. Somewhere a bit further away, Asafa was sleeping soundly, enjoying a nap by the lake after he had eaten his fill of fish. But it didn't take long before he heard unfamiliar roars from the direction that his crew was at. Asafa stood up slightly confused, but as he heard more roars, he definitely understood that something is wrong, so he hurried and ran as fast as he could. Just as he came to where the sound was coming from, he saw his brother trying to bite a big gorilla by the neck, but the gorilla stopped him by protecting his throat with his arm. As Simba bit down on it the gorilla used his chance to throw Simba to the ground, very hard. Simba. Asafa shouted as he came from behind the ape. Looking around he instantly understood the situation. Take care of Imani, I'll take care of him. Asafa said as he stared down the gorilla. Another one huh, a bigger one even, not bad, I was getting bored with this one. The gorilla said excited at the fact that he can kill even more today. The gorilla walked in a half circle to the other side of where Asafa was so that he could have both Simba and Asafa in his field of sight. Asafa copied the gorilla and also walked in a half circle, effectively changes positions with the gorilla, so that he can have Simba and Amani behind him. Then they both rushed towards each other, and the ape grabbed Asafa by his dark brown mane, and tried pushing him down to exhibit his superior strength. But he wasn't ready for what came after, Asafa pushed back. The gorilla expected the lion to lose out on strength, but to his surprise, the lion that had just arrived was slightly stronger than himself. The ape tried with all his might to push down Asafa, as he held onto Asafa's mane, but he was getting pushed back, step for step as Asafa stepped forward towards the gorilla, to keep pushing him. Now that we have competed in strength, it's time to understand why lions are the apex predator. Asafa said while instantly using his claws to cut the chest of the gorilla. The gorilla saw it coming and tried to back off, but it was too late. Asafa's claws were to sharp and cut into his chest, deeply giving the gorilla a horrible wound. Three deep gashes on his chest. The gorilla was shocked, he had many scars on his body, but he had never received such a bad wound before. He raised both arms to smash Asafa to death, but before he could even go through the movements, Asafa attacked again. This time, his claws went for the leg of the gorilla, after all, Asafa understood that all the power from the upper body comes from the lower body. The cut from his claws ripped into the muscles of the gorilla's right leg, leaving the gorilla in an awkward position, and at that moment, Asafa saw his chance and took it. His fangs found its way to the gorilla's throat and bit down on it. The gorilla's eyes widened in surprise and instantly tried to punch and push with all his might to get rid of the lion, but Asafa wouldn't let go of his hold. The punches and wailing form the gorilla got annoying, so he bit with all his might until he felt a crack. At that crack, the whole gorilla went limp and fell down, slightly convulsing and quivering. Asafa had bitten through the gorilla's throat and broken his spine. As that was happening, Asafa was snarling like mad. Yet even then, Asafa was still biting onto the gorilla's neck until he felt his prey going totally limp. Simba had made sure that Imani was alive before turning his sight to the fight. He made sure to stay by her side to protect her in case something went wrong. He couldn't help the feeling of his blood boiling as he saw the fight going on. His lion instincts made him want to join. In the end, Asafa bit through the gorilla's neck and broke his spine, and then held onto it until it died. Simba stared at his brother in awe, Asafa hid blood around his mouth and his claws, and looked unharmed. Simba hadn't seen such a scene since he was a child, and his parents showed him how to hunt and to kill. Since he arrived here four years ago, he hadn't hunted an herbivore once, he ate insects, bugs, snails and fish. But swing the blood of the gorilla made his cells scream at him, shout at him to consume. 
and seeing his brother with liquid gold around his mouth and claws, made him remember the feelings he had when he was young and wanted to grow up so he could hunt and become a skilled lion. Are you well? Asafa asked after he realized the carcass of the gorilla, seeing his brother being in a daze worried him. Yes, I just remember something from when we were young he confessed. I see. Asafa felt relief that his brother wasn't hurt. And he could understand what he meant with those words, as he also felt his natural instincts kick in after he hunted hyenas for the first time. Is she fine? Asafa asked worriedly as he looked at Imani. Seems like it, I think she's just asleep. Simba said as he couldn't see any obvious wounds. Ai as suddenly, Humba, Taiman and Hammer ran out of the bushes with weapons in their hands, ready to fight or die. Huh? Pumba stopped in his tracks when he saw the scene in front of him. On top of Pumba stood Taiman with a sharpened branch, holding it like a spear. Beside Taiman was Hamu, holding onto rocks with his tail, ready to throw them. You already defeated him Taiman asked. Maybe I used accidentally killed him with my super sight. Hamu questioned. But as they saw Amani laying down like that they all hurried towards her. Each pushing and showing her trying their best to awaken her, and it seemed to work. Yawan, ah what a good nap, why did you wake me up? Imani said as she groggily woke up. What nap, you worried a sick. Taiman admonished her. Wait. Suddenly she stood up and looked around frantically, remembering what happened. Don't worry we took care of it. Asafa said, and only then did she notice the dead gorilla. Yeah we totally did. Pumba said proudly. Well we did most of the work, Asafa helped out a bit. Taiman said as he walked up to the big lion. Just as he was about to pat him in an endearing way, he noticed the blood that was dripping down from Asafa's mouth. Half his face had blood on it. And the time and sight fells down and saw Asafa's pawns full of blood. His sight went back up and saw Asafa's face again, only now did he realize that there is a full-blown predator in front of him. A Asafa, he simpered before passing out. Huh, what's wrong with him? The lion asked confused. Pumba realizing what's going on went to pick up the meerkat. Time and don't worry, we have tamed Asafa and Simba, no worries. Pumba said. When Asafa heard that he felt his eyes twitch. What should we do with that? Imani asked, her sight dead on the carcass with drool coming out of her mouth. Her diet used to consist of merely meat before, but now it had been reduced to bugs and fish, only occasionally would she hunt secretly. That. You guys go ahead, we'll return first. Pumba said as he realized that all the predators seemed slightly uncomfortable. Pumba realized that they wanted to eat. After time and Hamu and Pumba left, Asafa walked over to the gorilla and went straight to the guts. Simba and Amani also walked up to the gorilla, but they waited as the gorilla was Asafa's kill. There was a strict hierarchy regarding consumption in groups amongst feline predators. For the lions, when game was brought home, the leader would eat first, then followed by the second rank, until the lowest in rank are last. Asafa looked at the body, and his instincts told him that the gut area was the juiciest. The most energy and nutrition for lions was not in the muscles, but instead, the organs. He started licking the area he wanted to dig into. His tongue ripped part of the skin off as lions had very rough, sandpaper-like tongues to help rip a delicate part of the body. After taking a few licks, the skin was ripped open and the organ poured out. Asafa went for the one that seemed the tastiest. Seeing Asafa start eating, Simba went for the head and bit off the skull for each the luscious brain. Imani went for one of the legs with lots of muscles. I I miss the taste of blood and gore. Imani said in a cute voice as she happily ripped into the flesh of the gorilla. Simba had not tasted something this good since he was a child, so he didn't even notice the surrounding as he dived right into the brain. It took a while for them to consume the whole body, after all the gorilla was about 230 kilograms, and if you disregard the skeleton, feet, hands and other parts that wasn't desirable to eat, then there was probably about 100 kilograms of good stuff on the body, including muscles, organs and blood. They consumed it all, with Asafa being the one that ate the most. I feel like I won't need to eat again for a year. Simba said with a yawn. After a good meal, one should always take a nap. Let's go back and rest for a bit. Imani said. Cough cough maybe we should wash up first. Asafa advised as he saw how bloody they had gone. He didn't want Taiman to pass out again. All three of the stood up and went to the lake to wash up. And as they walked side by side, it looked like three pregnant felines because of their bulging stomachs. 
After returning, there was a bit of an awkward atmosphere. It's like meat eaters sitting in the same room as vegans. But it soon disappeared as they took a nap together. Things went back to normal. Asafaya. Pumba shouted as he ran to him. A month had passed since the gorilla incident, and it had been two months since Hamu joined in on their group. Pumba and Hamu had gone out to explore a bit, and they found something exciting. What, let me sleep a bit more, Asafa moaned as he tried putting his pawns on his ears. We found something amazing. Hamu said excited. Didn't anyone teach you to never wake up a napping Merkid? Suddenly an angry Taiman crawled out from the war man cozy mane of Asafa, looking quite angry. Oh Taiman, no time to relax we found an even better place to relax. Pumba said. A better place to relax. Taiman's attention was caught. Yes, we've never explored that direction of the forest, so me and Hamu went there as far as the eye can see, until we came out of the forest. Umba spit out as if he was in a hurry. And what did you find? Suddenly Simba and Amani arrived hearing their loud voices from far away. Simba. We found a volcanic mountain, Pumba said with vigor. At this, Taiman stood up very excited as well. Huh, what's so good about that? Asafa asked. Asafa you ignorant cub. If this is going where I think it's going, then you're in for one of the best times of your life. Taiman said expectantly. Taiman you're right. Pumba said. Everyone looked at them, not quite understanding the big deal. There was a huge mist around the mountain Pumba shouted. Yahuo. Taiman shouted as well. A mist, what's so special about that? Imani seemed bored of the discussion. Imani you ignorant mutt. If there is a mist, there is a Taiman said mysteriously. Hot Spring Taiman and Pumba said together. Now, all their attentions were totally caught. Asafa, Imani, Simba and Hamu had never seen such a magical thing before, but they were aware as both Pumba and Taiman had told magical, mystical, fantastical tales of such a place. And now it seemed like Hay were about to witness it with their own eyes. Let's go then. Asafa stood up, very excited. Everyone agreed. They all left, although they had explored most of the forest, they hadn't explored so far east before, and before long they arrived at the outskirts of the forest where they saw a mountain in the distance, or rather, a volcano. Surrounding it was a lot of mist, and there was even smoke going out of its head. Didn't I tell ya? Pumba said proudly. Smack smack, this bacon still got some brains huh, Taiman said while slapping the backside of Pumba. Hey, I'm more than a bubble butt. Pumba took offense. And that's why I haven't eaten you yet. Imani said proudly. They all started moving towards the mountain, and soon, they found themselves at its feet. Excitement could be seen in all their eyes. Perfect place to enjoy the sunset. Simba whispered. They all started walking up the mountain in hopes of finding the hot springs. As they walked up they could feel the temperature rising. Isn't it too hot? Asafa questioned. No, this is even better. This is what they call sauna. Taiman explained, who are they? Pumba questioned. You know, the others in other places. Oh. As they went one third way up the mountain they found a small area with enough hot water for only a few. Before the three felines could react, Pumba, Hamu and Taiman rushed in. Huh. That's cheating. Simba complained as he noticed that there was only enough room for one more animal. As he was about to suggest who should go in, Imani got a fearful expression on her face as she looked behind them. It was as if she had seen a great foe. Instinctively both Asafa and Simba looked back for any signs of danger, but what met their sights was nothing. Splash haha fools, instead of complaining about the rules, you should learn to play the game. Imani said as she tricked the two cats, so that she could get in before them. Asafa looked speechlessly at her. No no, she is not to blame, she was born shameless and tricky, I can only blame myself. Asafa whispered a mantra to calm himself. Hey you played dirty. Simba complained. La, go further up and find another hot spot. Imani retarded. Simba looked at Taiman, Pumba and Hamu for support. Sorry kiddo, life's unfair. Taiman explained, there was nothing he could do about this. Well, technically he could offer his spot to one of them, but will he do it? Zero chance. Sigh, let's go up. Asafa said. But grrr fine, see how I'll take my revenge later on. Simba said with a grin, as if he had devious plans for Imani. HMPH, you're a billion years too young to prank me. Hush hush, go away. She waved them away. 
The two brothers locked eyes and instantly knew that they would have to prank the others sometime later. Let's go. Simba said as the two started their climb again. After they continued climbing for a while, the mist became so heavy that they could barely see anything in front of them. Wait I think I found it. Simba said excited. Finally. So how should we take our revenge? Asafa asked as he walked into a pool of water. I it feels so good him how about Simba fell into contemplation. Both were enjoying the warm water. Maybe we should feed them something spicy. Or set their tails on fire. Asafa said seriously Simba's eye twitched, isn't that going overboard? Isn't that dangerous? Or we'll pour honey on them. Simba tried changing their plan into one that wouldn't put the other's health at risk. I got it. We could put a trap in their path, and when they walk over it, a big boulder will fall on them. Asafa said as if he got a brilliant idea. In the heavy mist, Simba could barely see his brother, only his shadow could be clearly seen. As for his expressions, they were blurry. That's why Simba was feeling a bit scared that his brother wasn't joking. If his pranks are this dangerous I hope he never pranks me Simba thought, still unsure if his brother is joking or not. Maybe we can push them into a cold lake during a cold day. Simba suggested. Or we'll throw them into a lake with alligators and sharks and piranhas. I think it's better to not prank them, now that I think about it, Simba got afraid for real. Or we could push them into lava. Asafa felt like he really found the right prank this time, harmless but fun. Oh, let's wait with the pranking until another day silence overtook the brothers as they relaxed in each other company. They could only see each other's shadows as they say in the hot spring with heavy steam and mist. Asafa Simba said with a low tone. Yes brother. Feeling that they couldn't see each other's faces, made it easier for Simba to speak about something that had been on his mind and chest. Thank you, it should be me thanking you instead. Asafa answered, feeling like the grateful one should be him, not Simba. No, you don't get it after kill losing our father, I could see no light after that, if I didn't have you by my side. Simba couldn't continue his sentence, but nothing needed to be said more, as Asafa understood. I can only say the same, the world doesn't feel as lonely when I have you by my side. Asafa admitted. They had never opened up like this before, maybe it was the heat getting to their heads, maybe it was the fact that they couldn't see each other's faces which made it a bit anonymous, and made them a bit braver. Even with the others, Taiman, Humba, Imani and Hamu, I will eternally be thankful for them, but having your blood, your kin, your brother beside you I have no words, thank you Asafa. The guilt of believing that he had killed his father, was a heavy burden to carry, but having Asafa by his side, eased the pain. Simba, there might come a day, when we may not be beside each other, but know this, even if I'm not right by your side, I'll always be by on your side. Asafa said, fearing a fateful day when Simba will take his place in the Pride Lands. Asafa could hear his brother change from a relaxed position to serious one. Asafa promised that you won't leave my side. Simba said, not liking the tone of his brother. Promise. He said slightly anxious. I promise that you'll always find me under the trees of this forest. Asafa said, playing with his words and feeling slightly guilty about it. Simba seemed to relax once again. How do you think the others are doing? Simba asked. They are probably telling tales of their bravado before we met each other. Asafa said, thinking that Simba was asking about Taiman, Humba, Imani and Hamu. Oh. Yeah probably. Simba didn't explain what he meant, feeling that it was unnecessary to ask about their past lives. Silence took over once again as they both relaxed. After a long while, Asafa yawned and stretched. These so-called hot springs are really as good as Taiman and Pumba claimed. Asafa said with a sleepy tone. Brother. Asafa found that his brother had fallen asleep. Just as he was about to wake him up, he stopped. His nose had picked up a weird smell, a burnt, sulfur-like smell. What's this? He whispered as he tried to look around. But because of the mist and steam it was impossible to see anything, and the sky had started to darken. Asafa got a weird feeling, he started to feel anxious. Simba. Wake up. He suddenly got to his brother and pushed him awake. Ah what's going on, why did you wake me? Simba complained with grogginess. I think we should get back to the others. Asafa said. I want to sleep a bit more. He said. Before they could continue debating, they both suddenly felt an intense shake. It was as if the earth had erupted in rage as a powerful earthquake shocked the very mountain they stood on. 
Both instantly got out of the hot spring, but they could barely find their footing as both fell down. The earthquake was that powerful. We need to get down this mountain. Asafa shouted. You don't say. Simba responded. Now is not the time to be a smart ass. Asafa got irritated. They could barely move as the volcano shocked so fiercely. Finally when the shaking receded slightly could they try to escape, but before they could run far, both felt an ominous heat coming from above. Looking up, they couldn't see clearly because of the steam and mist, but they could figure out what was going on. The mist had darkened as a black smoke seemed to mix into the mist. And from within it, one could see a red glow, flowing down the mountain. Both Simba and Asafa's eyes widened in horror, and their hearts almost stopped. It's a volcanic eruption, run. Asafa shouted as they awoke from their stupor. The lava was flowing down the mountain like a river, or a furious beast charging at them in hunger to consume them. Both ran as fast as they could, but it wasn't very fast since the volcano was violently shaking, and the path was steep. Simba was behind his brother and they went down as fast as they could, both looked worried and extremely focused, as they concentrated on where they should put their next paw. As Asafa ran first, he suddenly felt the ground shake heavily, and a rift started opening right in front of him. Instinctively, he jumped towards the other end, when he landed he turned around to see if his brother could make it, as the rift grew bigger and bigger. Hurry, you can make it. Asafa shouted in worry. Simba had stopped, because when he reached it, the rift had become wide, just as he was about to jump before it grew too wide, magma burst out of the rift. The magma started flowing down towards Asafa, forcing him to reluctantly back down further from the rift. Simba saw how his brother didn't want to leave him, but had no other choice he shouted, Asafa, runs down, I'll find another path. Time was running out, lava was flowing down like a river from the top of the volcano, and now a rift opened up between them, and another smaller river of lava started flowing, splitting them apart further. Simba turned to another path and started running as fast as he could. It didn't take long for Asafa before he couldn't see his brother as dark smoke had replaced the former mist. Simba. Asafa roared for his brother in absolute horror and worry. The lava continued flowing down, forcing Asafa to continue his sprint down. There was still a long way to go since they had climbed very high on the mountain. What's going on? An antelope asked another as they noticed the ground shaking. Maybe an earthquake had occurred. Look over there. The other said, looking towards the horizon where they could see heavy smoke filling up the sky, all originating from a volcano that had erupted, far away from the antelopes. Let's hurry away. The antelope said in worry. Even if the natural catastrophe was far away, the sight of it was scary to anyone that laid eyes on it. And right in the middle of the volcano, a lion was hurrying down an unknown path. Simba had been split from his brother, and he had to take in another path, longer path, circling the mountain. The lava had almost reached him and was flowing very fast. Simba could barely see anything in front of him because of the smoke, and his paws started to burn as the volcano was heating up. He didn't know what path he was taking since this was far away from where they had climbed, he just hoped for the best. As he ran, he found that the path he took down, led to a valley on the mountain. He had no choice but to continue. After running for what felt like years, Simba felt the temperature raising even more. Confused, he looked back and found that the lava was flowing even faster because of the valley-like path he had chosen, it was closing in on him, and he had no choice but to run even faster, although he could barely see where he was going. After sprinting with all his might, his paw stumbled on a rock, and he fell down rolling down the valley that had become very steep. He tried to stabilize, but before he could stop his plunge, the valley opened up and he came to a cliff and tumbled over. Simba only felt his body rolling and plummeting down, before the ground underneath him suddenly disappeared, and suddenly there was only air underneath him as he fell from the cliff. He instinctively roared as he fell. A lion's mighty roar can be heard from 8 kilometers away. His mighty roar echoed throughout the mountain. His fall was over 9 meters, and he crashed into a small tree, complete breaking off the tree. Both Simba and the three fell on top of a big rock. When he fell, he hit his head first and because of the hard collision, Simba fell unconscious. The lava continued flowing until it reached the cliff where Simba fell, and it flowed down like a waterfall. From the cliff, a big rock broke off from the cliff and fell down crashing into the ground, breaking into many parts. 
a fragment of the rock as big a basketball soared through the sky toward Simba, fortunately, it only hit his tail. The rock fragment clashed against his tail so hard that 70% of Simba's tail got cut off. The lava started flowing down like a waterfall and filling the area, and soon the lava started running down the mountain like a flood again. The big rock that Simba had fallen unconscious on, suddenly split into two parts because of the heat from the lava. One half standing still where it stood and soon got swallowed by lava. And the other half of the big rock, which Simba was laying on top of, the rock Simba was on, had started floating down with a lava river, down the mountain. The rock Simba was on slowly got swallowed by the lava as it floated downwards. A few kilometers from where Simba fell off the cliff, Asafa was running his fastest, hoping to get away so he can meet his brother again. As he ran, he soon heard the screams and shouts from Taiman and the others. Asafa could hear how they were shouting for him and his brother as they ran down. Soon he caught up to them. Hamu was on top of Pumba, crying out, and Taiman was riding Imani like a horse. Both of them shouting for either Simba or Asafa, hoping that they were fine. Asafa heard the anxiousness in their voices. Hurry up, ran faster. Asafa shouted as he ran by their side, they were relieved to find him safe and sound, but soon they noticed that Simba wasn't with him. Taiman was just about to ask him about it, but he noticed how perturbed and uneasy Asafa seemed, so he kept his mouth shut, so that he wouldn't make Asafa lose focus on where he was stepping. Everyone had gotten black or gray from the dark smoke that they ran through, and Asafa got the darkest because he was further up the volcano than the others were. As they were running, Hamu suddenly fell from Pumba's head and stumbled on the ground. It was hard for Hamu to keep himself on top of Pumba as he had no arms. Pumba was about to stop and pick him up, but Asafa, who was the furthest back, shouted for him to continue. Yes, continue. Don't mind me. It's better that only I die than both of us. Hamu shouted, willing to give his life so that the other can survive. Sadly, his heroic spirit was broken as Asafa came to where Hamu was and picked him up with his mouth and continued running. Ah never mind, I'll survive with you. Hamu corrected himself suddenly all of them heard a mighty roar from a distance. All of them realized that it was a lion's roar, and it sounded very dismayed. This roar made all of them halt and look back, all very worried. Asafa froze, as he remembered what he had seen that day. That day when his father fell from the cliff, his roar at that time sounded eerily similar the roar now. Asafa. Taiman shouted, noticing that he seemed in a haze. Pumba and Taiman looked at each other in worry, and seemed to realize that it was more than just a brotherly worry. He shouted once again to try to get back Asafa to the right mind, but it seemed like Asafa had fallen into a mental maze. Slapamani got to Asafa and slapped him hard. Now's not the time to worry, we have to run or we die. She said angrily as the lava was closing in. It seemed like it worked as Asafa came back to reality and took the lead in running. Simba you better be alright. He thought, and although he looked like he was focused on running, his chest was constricted and heavy. Asafa, Taiman, Pumba, Imani and Hamu finally made it down the mountain in one piece. But they still continued running for a kilometer before they stopped just in case the lava continued flowing towards them. When they stopped all of them were panting and coughing as they had breathed in smog. Pant 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 cough cough, we cough should search for Simba. Asafa said as they had stopped for nearly 20 seconds. His worry couldn't be hidden. No one disagreed with him. Even though they were all exhausted, one of their own was missing. So they all started walking towards the side of the mountain that they heard the lions roar and started searching. And they searched and searched. Maybe he went back to the forest. Taiman said as he looked up to the sky. The sky had turned bright from all the shining stars and the moon. They had searched half the night by the foot of the mountain, trying to find any trace or trails of Simba, but nothing was found. Asafa had occasionally roared, and his roar reached double that of an ordinary lion, so from all around the mountain, he could clearly be heard. If Simba was near he would know where they are. Imani also looked up to the stars, the volcano had calmed down, and the smoke had cleared. The night had become so calm that they could barely believe what they had just survived. All for them were exhausted and tired, endlessly searching for Simba. You guys can turn back if you're tired. Asafa said without turning around, he would not stop until he found his brother. No way, Simba is someone important to us as well, we won't stop. Taiman explained. He only suggested that because maybe Simba had returned back, not because he wanted to stop looking for him. 
Should we search in groups instead of together? We can cover more ground. Taiman suggested. That's a good idea. Me and Pumba will go this path, while you three go ahead. Imani said. Their search continued, and it wasn't until dawn, when the sky started to brighten up before the sunrise, that Pumba and Imani found something horrible. Since they couldn't find anything at the foot of the volcano, and since the volcano had completely calmed down, they decided to venture up the mountain to see if they could find anything. And they did. Both started weeping and crying profoundly. Should sniff sniff we keep this hidden? Pumba asked as he knew how this would completely destroy Asafa. He wasn't as oblivious as he seemed. The day he and Taiman picked up Simba and Asafa, they understood that the two lions, the race that's always in prides, must have lost important people. They saw how Asafa and Simba kept each other going by being there for each other. So Pumba understood that the moment Asafa sees the scene in front of them, he would probably be very hurt. We shouldn't, protecting him from this might do him more harm. And he'll be fine, we will be there for him. Imani said as tears continued falling down her eyes. She had completely fallen in love with their group. And now, one was gone. Pumba heard her, almost stoic, voice and looked at her, that's when he understood that she was putting on a strong front. I'll go find them. Pumba said as he turned around to leave her alone for a while. Pumba searched for his group, and by the time that the sun had started rising, he found them. Pumba. Where's Imani, did you guys find anything? Hamu asked as he noticed Pumba, almost dragging his feet towards them. Pumba. Taiman said in askance, seeing that Pumba had cried and seemed slightly depressed, he hoped that they hadn't found Simba, because if they did find him and Pumba was behaving like this, Asafa looked at Pumba for a while, without showing any expression except the exhaustion on his face. Pumba stopped in front of Asafa and just looked at him. Silence overtook them. Show me the way. Asafa simply said, without any emotion in his voice, although the others could hear how devoid his voice was of hope. Pumba turned around and kept dragging his feet to where he and Imani found Simba. Soon they climbed up the mountain and arrived to where Imani was simply sitting, and where Pumba had left her. When they arrived near, they noticed that the rock they were walking on, was very hot and slightly soft, understanding that this had been lava before it cooled down. When they arrived beside Imani they saw it all. The lava that had hardened into a stone, seemed to have swallowed 80% of a big rock and a tree, and on top of the rock was lots of blood and a lion's tail. All of them froze as they recognized that tail. Asafa also halted for a second before walking over to the swallowed stone and sniffing around. Until he came to the tail that seemed to be stuck to the ground that was once flowing lava. Although he was certain of what had happened here, he still had a minuscule hope of it being another lion, but sniffing the tail, he knew that it was Simba's tail. Backing up, he looked at the ground, seeing how uneven and bumpy it was, he started going around the bumps, almost as if trying to identify where his brother was. He tried finding a bump big enough, so he'd know where his brother was swallowed by the lava. Soon he came to where the tail and blood was and simply laid down beside the rock. He was exhausted, more mentally than physically. But with mental exhaustion, the physical follows. A sophilade, curled up around the tail stuck on the ground. And right now, it was as if he was once again a cub under his father's arms. Once again, in that valley, beside his father's dead body as it slowly lost its heat. A small cub no bigger than a pup, laying under the mighty lion, that seemed to have lost all its might. But now, it was a big lion, laying around a small tail, on a bump on the ground that might have been where his brother got swallowed. He laid there, but no tears could come out, it was as if he had depleted all his tears. They all cried and came to where Asafa was and sat beside him. And they stayed like that for a few hours. I think it's time for us to return. Taiman said. They had cried and grieved, but they couldn't just keep staying here eternally. So he spoke out. Asafa had fallen asleep around his brother's tail. You guys go ahead, I'll stay with Asafa until he wakes up. Pumba said. I don't want to leave either. Hamu said. He hadn't known them for long, but it wasn't the quantity of time, but the quality of time that mattered. Imani and Taiman went down the mountain, but it took no longer than an hour before they returned, not empty-handed of course. We brought food, hey you wake up, bam Taiman shouted and kicked Asafa so he would wake up. They hadn't eaten since the day before, and Taiman wouldn't allow them to starve themselves. I'm not hungry. Asafa mumbled before trying to fall asleep again. 
Hyman furiously kicked him again, but to Asafa, it was like a light slap from a one-year-old. Imani worked hard to get you this food. Taiman said as he handed Asafa a big piece of meat. Asafa looked at Taiman slightly surprised. Taiman had never before supported him eating a carnivorous diet, but now he's handing over the meat himself. Looking over to Imani, she seems fatigued as well, so Asafa felt obligated to eat what they had brought. There was food for everyone, and all of them started eating. When they were done eating in silence, they had all regained a bit of energy. Taiman worried that they would keep staying here all blue, as Asafa seemed totally uninterested in standing up. But to his surprise, after everyone ate their fill, Asafa was the first to stand. I think it's time to return. Asafa said as he started walking. He said his goodbyes, and he couldn't kept staying here, making his other family members worry. He finally noticed how saddened they were about Simba, and worried sick they were about him when he ate. So he decided to be strong for them. Everyone looked at each other before they also stood up and followed him. Every now and then, Asafa would stop and look back, before finding his resolve again and keep walking. As they silently walked back, they were all in their own line of thought. For Asafa, he was so deeply pondering that he almost forgot that he wasn't alone. The question how could Simba die? Hept repeating in his mind, but in the end he came to a startling realization. In the end, what is canon doesn't even matter anymore Asafa halted. As he looked around at those behind him, he came to another conclusion. Those around me are real persons, I can't control how and when they die. I can't protect them from things that are above my capabilities, no matter how much knowledge I gain from my former life. Asafa thought as he looked at his crew that all seemed to be in deep thought as well. As he came to accept his new understanding of life and death he was about to continue walking, but that's when another thought striked him like thunder. Then my father's death. Can it still be partially blamed on me? If I can't control things that are beyond my capabilities, then his death is solely to blame on my uncle. The others stopped because they noticed that Asafa suddenly seemed to get very serious, as if he's about to hunt prey. Then the atmosphere changed back to the normal, and Asafa continued walking. Life continued for the crew of five, although it took a few weeks before their spirits completely lifted, and everything returned back to how it used to be, well, almost. Without Simba, they were one less person, and ever since that accident, Asafa didn't laugh as much, and he seemed more mature. Although he did still play around, laugh, play. But they all noticed that he seemed to. They couldn't put their fingers on it. It seemed like he was maybe waiting for something. He seemed ready for something. The big forest they lived in, was east-south of the Pride Lands. And further east from the forest was the volcano in which the accident had occurred. Further east of that volcano, very far from it, was alone walking. This lion only had 30% of his trial left, a big burn mark all over the left side of his face and upper body. This lion kept walking east, not knowing who he is, where he is going and to what purpose. All he remembers is that he woke up because of an intense burning, in an area filled with lava. His whole body was in pain and when he woke up he couldn't remember anything. All he knew what that he is a lion. Seeing the situation he was in, he did his best to survive, and when he came down from the mountain, he chose a direction and kept walking, hoping to regain his memories and find his home. Ten months since the last accident. One lovely night the five lay together, stargazing. The ringing of bugs could be heard in the grass, together with the calming wind, things felt very peaceful. The five laid on their back with the sky filled with stars as their cover. Timon. Pumba asked, looking at the stars. Yeah. Ever wondered what those sparky dots are? Pumba, I don't wonder, I know. Timon said with a calm certainty. Oh, what are they? He asked. They are fireflies. Fireflies that got stuck in that big bluish black thing. He said with depth wisdom beyond his years. Oh, gee. I always thought that they were balls of gas burning billions of miles away. Pumba, for you everything is gas. I for one, think that they are evil ghosts that are stuck up there, and can only be seen in the night. Hamu said ghosts. Pumba questioned. Yes, those evil spirits that want to bring harm to us. Every now and then, they succeed in escaping their prison, and then they cause natural disasters for us. Hamu said. Oh. That's why, sometimes you see one of the falling down from the sky, that means that the ghost escaped and will cause chaos in the coming days. Hamu said. He was sure of this as he had heard this from his parent before they got killed. 
You might be right, but from what I've heard, they are the dots of all past panthers that have ever lived. Imani said, looking up with nostalgia. Oh, then what about you Asafa? Asafa looked up to his sky and gazed at any stars, hoping to get a glimpse of something familiar. But nothing happened. Asafa. Oh right, I believe that they are suns, same as the one on the day, but these are very far away and appear smaller. Asafa said. Suns. Pfffft, ha <laughs> yeah right. Then we would never have night time. Timon laughed. Is that so Asafa said, not caring about Timon's dismissal, still looking closely at the night sky. What do you think Simba would have said? Pumba asked, silence overtook them. Asafa sat up and looked up to the sky. Someone once told us that the great kings of the past are up there watching over us. Asafa said while he sat up, looking up to the sky. Really? Imani asked, pondering if Simba would really give such an answer. A bunch of royal dead guys are watching us. Pfffft ha 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 ha, Asafa you're killing it today ha ha ha. Diamond continued laughing while slapping his legs. Hamu and Imani laughed with him, while Pumba was looking up to the sky in wonder. Asafa suddenly turned and started walking away. The four looked at each other, wonder if they hurt his feelings or something. Was it something I said? Taiman asked. As for Asafa, he wasn't hurt by their words, no rather, he just felt nostalgic and wanted to be alone. When he arrived far away from his crew, he once again looked up to the sky. He knew that his father was looking down. Are you disappointed in me? He whispered as he looked up. I'm not the man you hoped I'd be Asafa said. There was still no answer. Simba was supposed to be all that. But now that he's gone, father I'm sorry, sorry for your death. I'm sorry that I couldn't protect Simba and I'm sorry that I'm all that is left of your legacy. Asafa said looking up. He had hoped that he could meet his father one last time. But I am the last of your legacy, so this burden will fall on me sigh, what did I expect, Asafa muttered as he turned around. Suddenly the winds got stronger and the night got colder. Asafa looked up once again and saw something that had truly shaken him. Up in the sky, the clouds started to form, as soon as Asafa saw this he started sprinting with all he had so that he could be closer to the clouds. What he saw, truly made him feel small. The clouds turned into the form of his father, looking down on Asafa. Father. Asafa shouted. Asafa the mighty voice of the former Lion King reverberated through the sky. Asafa had carried the guilt of his father death for so long, most of his life. And now he could finally meet his father again. Although he had decided to let go of his guilt, he still felt sorry father, I'm sorry. Asafa's voice got softer as he spoke. Mufasa simply started at his son for a second. This is not your place Mufasa said. I know, but how can I return? Asafa spoke as his his father knew what he was going through. It does not matter, for you are my son, and your responsibility is to protect the pride lands. Father I'm sorry. Asafa shouted, this time with all his might. Although in his head, he had come to peace with everything that had happened, yet the heart doesn't always listen and sometimes holds on to a feeling that is better forgotten. You are my son. Is all Mufasa answered. I know I'm your son, what does that have to do with anything? You have not understood, and it is time for you to do so. Mufasa said as he started to turn around. Father wait, don't leave me just yet. Asafa started chasing with all his might, although he knew that it was pointless. I never left you nor your brother, remember, you are my son. Asafa finally stopped when the clouds disappeared and the winds calmed down. He sat down and stared at the sky, he didn't know if what he experienced was real as it felt so surreal. I know I'm your son. Why did you have to repeat that so many times Asafa sighed. Although his guilt had completely disappeared after meeting his father, now he were left with more questions than before. In a far, far away tree, just in the outskirts of the Pride Lands, a baboon was standing on a branch as he took in a big breath. He had just been awoken by the disturbance in the air, as it got windy and cloudy all of a sudden. After taking in a big breath, he held it for a bit, before his eyes widened and coughed out the air he had in his lungs. Mufasa he shouted in confusion. He was Rafiki, one of the close friends and advisors of the former Lion King, Mufasa. Sadly Mufasa and his two sons had died five years ago, leaving the pride land in the hands of an incompetent king, the brother of Mufasa. This had led to corruption in the lands. Yet right now, he felt the essence of Mufasa in the air. 
Rafiki was a spiritual being he knew and understood that this wasn't Mufasa in the flesh. Looking up to the sky, Ha saw in the furthest horizon, the clouds that seemed to dissipate. Why have you showed yourself, and why over there, Rafiki said with a big smile, as he could feel the change in the horizon. After a rainy day, a sunny would follow. Oh ho ho old friend, you left this Rafiki a gift didn't you? But I have to work for it ha? Huh? Rafiki said with a grin. Jumping around in joy, Rafiki couldn't help but to feel excitement in his bones. He didn't know what it was yet, but the fact that his old friend has appeared meant something good was about to reveal itself. I would have made fufu out of you if you weren't already dead ha 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 ha. Rafiki laughed at Mufasa in happiness. The next day, the group started the day with some bathing in the lake. Then when midday was arriving they decided to head out to get some food. Imani disappeared as usual. She hunted her food alone, far away. Asafa followed since he had already had his fill of fish in the lake, so he could do with a few bugs as dessert. Hamu slithered away to find a rat or mouse he could munch on. Asafa you seemed slightly out of it since yesterday, I didn't. You know, hurt you or anything right? Taiman asked, although he tried to seem nonchalant about it, it was clear that he was worried that he might have said something to hurt Asafa. No, it's not that. I just have something on my mind. Oh, what is it? Pumba asked. What does this mean if your father constantly tells you that you're his son? Even if you already know that? Asafa asked without thinking about it. Both Pumba and Taiman stopped in their tracks looking at each other. Do you think that someone of his pride came to retrieve him? His dad for example. Pumba asked in a whisper. No 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 well maybe, but we can't let him take Asafa back. He is our family now, plus we basically raised him. He's also our greatest protector against other predators. Diamond whispered back in worry. We need to trick him into staying. Pumba whispered. Hey I got an idea, we should probably trick him so that he'll stay with us. Diamond whispered. Ooh okay. Pumba agreed. About your question those kind of people is best to ignore. Taiman said to Asafa that seemed to be deep in thought. Ah yeah. Taiman is right. They only want to come back to your life when you're rich and successful. Pumba explained. It's not like that. Asafa dismissed them. Seeing this, Taiman and Pumba got even more worried. Asafa you little sassy brat, I'm telling you, parent are like past troubles. It's better to leave it in the past. Taiman said, trying to sound convincing. The future only holds the future. Umba gave his wisdom. As I said, it's not like that, don't worry about it, I'll think about it for myself. Asafa said before taking another path to ponder in silence. Sigh they grow up so fast. Pumba gave up. Hakuna Matata. Taiman said with a raised fist. Hakuna Matata. Pumba bumped his fist. As they walked around and picked up different delicious bugs, they couldn't help but to relax and leave all problems to the future. Asafa found a good tree that he laid beside as he slightly dug the earth. There he found lots of bugs crawling around. Although he filled his stomach on fish, he was fine with some bugs as candy. After slurping a few he closed his eyes and tried to nap, but he couldn't. You are my son Asafa whispered the words that kept echoing in his mind. Ha how can I relax and enjoy the simple life when those words keep hunting me? Asafa thought in irritation. His life goal had always been simple, first it was to enjoy the benefits of being the king's brother and lays around. Then it was to enjoy a life with a crew, far away from troubles. And now both his superior plans had failed. What was he to do? As he was contemplating, he hears the soul-piercing shriek of a familiar swine he had known for about five years. Then the soul-piercing shriek of a meerkat followed. Since Asafa was deep in thought, he didn't realize what might be happening right now. He stood up and started sprinting towards his companions without thinking. He was sprinting towards the shouting that seemed to be running towards his direction as well. Soon, because of his speed, and because Pumba was running for his life, they both passed each other. Pumba was shouting for his life and didn't even notice that he brushed past Asafa. Asafa saw the meerkat on Pumba's back safe and sound as well. To Asafa because of his speed, it was as if a red flash went by so he halted. Pumba. He whispered as Pumba disappeared behind him. Yet he before he could make sense of it, suddenly an apex predator followed Pumba and also seemed to ignore him. Lion. Asafa instantly ran back, chasing the lioness that was chasing Pumba, and it didn't take long before he caught up and punched her from behind, pushing her down. 
He didn't even need to use his strength to hold her down, as his superior size and weight did the trick. She fell to the ground and laid sideways as huge paws held her down. A look of pure horror overtook her as she realized that she couldn't move, and how big those paws were. Roar. She gave her best roar in anger and fear. Asafa held her down and frowned. As she was under him, he could make out who this was. Oh boy, drama incoming. Is the only warning sign that went inside his head. Pumba kept running without noticing that the lioness had been caught by Asafa. Asafa looked down and was unsure what he should do now, could he let her go when she looked so fierce. Just as he was pondering, another roar came from behind as another lioness appeared in full speed, pouncing towards him. Asafa just instinctively turned his body, making the other lioness that jumped towards him miss him, and crash head first into a tree right in front of them. Asafa still held down the other lioness and looked at the two. The one under him has pale fur with turquoise eyes, which seemed to be the perfect mix between blue and green. Looking up at the dizzy lion that had crashed into the tree, she was a darker shade than the one under him. Almost the same color as Simba was. Her eyes were ocean or cyan blue. The lion that crashed into the tree seemed to regain her balancing and started growling at him as she started to walk aggressively towards him, making sure he sees her fangs. Which one is which? Asafa wondered as he couldn't really put his finger on which was Nala and which was Ayana. They looked similar, and Gad changed much since they were cubs. He assumed that the one under him, the pale lioness was Nala, but it was hard to know since they looked eerily similar. Let go of my sister. The lioness shouted as she pounced him again. Asafa raised his paw and simply pushed her down as well. He was sitting on one and holding down the other by her neck. Nala struggled to bite him and as he held down her sister, she finally got her chance to turn enough to bite his paw. Asafa felt the lioness under him suddenly bite him, hard, so he let go in reflex. Nala took her chance and sprung up, growling. Right now, both Nala and Ayana were frightened by this lion who is at a size which neither had ever seen before. Not even the former king, which were hazy in their minds, but still the biggest lion they had formerly seen, could compare to the one in front of them. As she growled, she didn't attack him instantly, instead she observed him which made her realize how familiar he seemed. Nala stared at the lion, that looked eerily similar to the former king from her memories, except that the lion in front of her was noticeably bigger. His fur was brown, and his mane was dark brown. His eyes were piercing green. As for Ayana as she was held down, she could only see a sofa from underneath him. As she looked up, she got a feeling that they had met before. Ah! It's you. Ayana shouted as she realized who this is. Did she recognize me this fast? Asafa started to worry about what he should say to his childhood friends as he let go of Ayana. He backed up and sat down looking at her as she stood up. Nala stopped growling as Ayana seemed to recognize this big fella. It's you isn't it? Ayana said slightly excited. Asafa didn't answer, he wasn't sure how he could tell them yet, it's me, Uncle Asafa. My twin and I survived, surprise. Oh right, my twin died recently, another surprise. That reply wouldn't fly. It's you, the one I saw on the tree. The one hunting the hyenas. Ayana realized. Only then did Asafa realize that she hadn't recognized him truly, only his secret identity ad hyena hunter. The royal crown prince during the day, and a hyena hunter vigilante during the night. Cough cough, erm yes, he didn't know what to say at this moment. How should he tell them that he is their long lost friend? Nala frowned at this, Ayana seemed to recognize him when she herself hadn't seen this lion before, which was weird because she felt like she also recognized him from somewhere. One have to remember, these three haven't met each other since they were cubs, even then, Nala is one year older than Ayana and Asafa. So she remembered those events slightly more clearly. While in Ayana's head, although she remembers Asafa whom she had a crush on, and Simba the crown prince, she couldn't remember the time they spent together clearly, nor their looks, only hazy shadows were left in her mind, but she early remembered their friendship. Nala got even more concerned when she realized that Ayana knew an outsider without telling her. Which made her protective alarms go off. Ayana who is this? Nala said in a dangerous voice. I don't really know him, I just saw him hiding from us when we were hunting the hyena hunter. She said, her eyes still vigilant on Asafa. Ayana instantly felt her sister's eyes turn dangerous as she looked at her. Gulp she knew that Nala would deal with her when they got back. I knew I shouldn't have kept it a secret back then. 
When they were young, Nala was the misbehaving ball of energy, while she, Ayana tried to be more aloof like her childhood crush Asafa. But when they lost the two royal princes, their best friends Nala changed into an overprotective sister, way too mature for her age. Why are you hunting the hyenas in our turf, and why did you attack us today? Nala asked the hyena hunter, with aggression in her voice. She didn't treat him as a friend for simply hunting the hyenas, after all, it was still in their territory. Other lions are not welcome no matter how bad their situation was. Since Asafa wasn't sure how to explain why he hunted hyenas, he started with the second question. I didn't attack you first. You obviously did. Ayana got angry. At first she thought that the hyena hunter might be a good guy, but now her image of him started to change. No, you guys attack Timon and Pumba, my family. Asafa said seriously. Timon and Pumba. What kind of lion names are those? And when did we attack other lions? Nala scoffed. Not lions, a pig and a meerkat. Asafa explained. Those two. How can you be friends with food? Ayana got even angrier, thinking he was lying even more, to come up with a false reason as to why he attacked them. Roer Asafa angrily got up and roared to show that, that's where he draws the line. Both Nala and Ayana started to growl. They're not food, they are my family. Asafa said angrily. After all, if someone tries to kill someone dear to you, you would get angry lest you don't really hold precious feelings to them. Fine, we'll accept your excuse. But let me ask you in advance are the other foods in this jungle your so-called family? Nala said with anger. She assumed that what Asafa meant was that this forest was his territory, and only he could hunt here. Hearing her question, Asafa realized that they misunderstood. Sigh, Timon. Pumba. Get over here. He shouted. He had heard the two sneakingly return here after they heard his roar. And he felt like it was better to resolve any misunderstanding that might occur between them. After all, he knew that soon, he'd have to return and defeat Scar and retake the position as king, he understood this since the day Simba died, no matter how unwilling he was. The throne could not be under Scar. It had become his responsibility, and it's better not to create conflict with these two. Arm, yes, sorry for eavesdropping, I'm time in the bones with barely any meat, and this is my stinky, rotten bacon friend Pumba. Not tasty at all. Nice to meet you. Time and meekly introduced themselves as they got behind a sofa. Both Nala and Ayana dropped their jaws at this a lion, a meerkat and a big family. It didn't make any sense at all, yet here they were. Then. You really weren't coming up with excuses so that we wouldn't hunt in your turf? Ayana asked still bewildered. PFFT you're still as silly as ever, Ayana Asafa stopped himself as he realized what came out of his mouth. Growl grrrrrr both of them got defensive, ready for aggression, when they realized that he knew their names. After all, if a stranger suddenly comes up to you and know your name, you'll get very defensive. Seeing how he screwed up, he might introduce himself before things got trickier. Nice to meet you again Ayana, Nala my name is Asafa. He said slightly nervous. How would they react to him still being alive? Nice to meet you again Ayana, Nala my name is Asafa. He said slightly nervous. How would they react to him still being alive? At first, Nala and Ayana tried to figure out how this stranger could possibly know their names, unless he was an enemy spying on them, but only after a few seconds did his introduction finally set in. Their defensive aggressiveness receded and what overtook them was confusion. Ayana looked skeptical, how could this stranger have the same name as him? Nala frowned heavily, trying to overlap the face in her memories with the one in front of her. Only then did she realize how similar they were, and only then did she realize why the lion in front of her was so similar to their former king. Asafa. Nala asked in nervousness. Could it be true? Could it really be true that he had returned from death? Her eyes filled with tears as uncertainty overtook her. She hoped that she was right, but what could be the odds, that this lion that looked like him, and had the same name as him, wasn't him. Still she didn't dare to hope too much. It's me Nala. Asafa said with a tone of softness in his voice. He had really missed these two. Asafa. She shouted as she pounced him, this time to showcase her relief and sorrows. They put their head together and rubbed them in nostalgia. Asafa felt like his heart relaxed. Sister don't be fooled by him. Ayana said, still skeptical, yet she couldn't bring herself to completely stop her sister, as she saw how relieved her sister seemed. Can it be really him? Oh boy, Timon whispered. 
Hyman and Pumba had hidden themselves in the bushes when they noticed the bad atmosphere, but things turned worse for every second Tymon looked on. Isn't this good news Tymon? Pumba asked, wondering why Tymon seemed so down. No Pumba it isn't, Tymon said with wisdom beyond his years. Asafa and Nala hugged and enjoyed each other to show affection. Only after a while did Nala back up, with slight tears in her eyes. How are you still alive? She asked, barely able to believe this. Wait, let me ask you something. Ayana proposed. The scrutiny in her voice was clear, obvious to all of them that she didn't believe this at all. After all, it is possible that he is a spy, and that he had overheard them talking about Simba and Asafa. Nala and Ayana occasionally reminisced about their past, and it's possible that this lion had overheard them while spying. Go ahead. Asafa said, excited to start teasing little Ayana well she isn't so little anymore. I once asked you Asafa in private if he wasn't worried about not being the crown prince. If you're really him, tell me what you answered me. She somberly said, hoping that he could answer yet didn't let her hopes up. Nala frowned, even she wouldn't remember the details of specific conversations she had with someone so far back. How can he remember something so trivial? In fact, even Ayana only remembered that moment because his words left a big imprint on her heart that day. Asafa started thinking for a while before a sad smile overtook his lion lips. He remembered Simba. Asafa wished that Simba could also meet these two again, but he can't, he will never be king is no good, having to work hard and take care of everyone, it's better to be the prince. Same royal treatment but no responsibility. Yes, only a dummy wants to be king. Asafa said in a chuckle as he remembered his youthful words, and how he was picking at his brother at that time, since he was going on about becoming king. Only a dummy would want to be king, Ayana repeated with shock in her eyes. Nala looked on, worried that Ayana wouldn't agree, but Nala knew in her heart that this was definitely Asafa, son of Mufasa. As for Ayana, the words that had once echoed in her youthful heart, echoed once again. She remembers how those words were so shocking to her at one point. After all, being king, seemed like the biggest achievement for her when she was young, yet her crush told her that it's the opposite, it's better to let someone else be a king, only dummies want to be king. Those words really had an effect on her, that's why she remembers it so clearly. You're him aren't you? She finally said in disbelief. I have been trying to tell you. Asafa said with a soft smile. Suddenly she pushed him as well, and since Asafa was relaxed, he allowed her to push him down, and start to show her affection, and how much she had missed him. Both Nala and Ayana seemed to have completely forgotten their troubles, as they started hugging and rubbing heads with him, and licking each other, as this was how lions showed affection for each other. After a while, Ayana finally come to her senses. Hold on, if you're the hyena hunter why did you never return to the Pride Lands? She finally asked, even Nala stared at him, not understanding the situation. It's complicated. Asafa tried to avoid the subject. Explain it, we have been under immense grief from the belief that you died, you owe us at least that much. Nala said. I sigh fine, it all started the day my father died. Asafa said, trying to choose his words carefully. Both Ayana and Nala listened closely. That was a painful day that changed the whole pride lands. That day led me and Simba to falsely believe that it was our fault for our father's death, Asafa said in a somber tone. Both looked confused at this. In the end, the guilt of believing that we killed our father made us run away, escape from the Pride Land to never return again. Asafa explained. Wait, both of you survived, both Ayana and Nala realized what he said and spoke out. Simba looked slightly sad at this. Yes, we escaped as far as he could and found this place which became our home. Then where is he? Nala asked. Gone he died a few months back in an accident. Asafa said with a hurt tone. Both realized that he was still in pain and started r- Hum, let me show you how I've lived for the past five years. Asafa said in excitement as he stood up. The size difference between him and the two was staggering. You really did grow much bigger than expected. Ayana said as she stood beside him. She remembers that he was bigger than them back then as well, but the difference wasn't this big. Follow me. Asafa said in a smile as he showed them the way to one of his favorite places. Ayana and Nala looked at each other before following him. As they walked behind him and stared at him, they couldn't help but to feel like this was all a dream. All had gone south for them ever since that day. The king died along with his two royal sons, their best friends. 
Then the king's brother took over the throne, but he wasn't ideal. He invited the hyenas to the pride lands leading to less food. The king was harsh and overworked the lions. In the end their lives had become a misery. But here they were, walking behind their dead friend, the rightful king. Would the pride land now return to what it was? But if Asafa was here all along and he knew the situation back home, and he refused to return would they be able to convince him? Nala and Ayana were both deep in their thoughts. Be careful here. Asafa said as he stepped over a big root of the tree that deformed the ground, yet neither of them heard what he said as they were too deep in their minds. Both fell down making Asafa turn back and look at them weirdly. What's going on, can't you even walk properly? Asafa asked looking at them. Both of them felt embarrassed and stood up. HMPH, we're not used to walking in the woods, Ayana tried to find an excuse. Nala just looked away. Fine, be careful. Asafa said as he continued leading them until they reached an opening where a small waterfall kept pouring water into a lake. Wow, what a beautiful place. Ayana said, excited by the beautiful scene. Go look in the water you'll be surprised by what you'll see. Asafa said mysteriously as he stood aside, giving them room to go to the edge of the lake. Nala and Ayana looked at each other and nodded before they walked towards the edge of the lake. What are we supposed to find? Nala asked as the two looked down to the water. But Asafa didn't answer, just as they were about to turn around to see why he didn't answer, they both felt a paw pushing them from behind, into the lake. Splash splash ahaha still as gullible as ever I see haha Asafa roared in laughter. Both Nala and Ayana swam up in panic, they weren't used to playing in the water, they hadn't done that since they were cubs. Seeing him laying on his back laughing, both felt irritation as they climbed out of the water. TSK still as immature as ever. Ayana complained as she shook off the water from her fur. HMPH, and here I thought that maybe you had matured. Nala said. Me, immature. Now way, I think you got the wrong lion, maybe you were thinking about him. Asafa said while pointing towards the other side of the lake, with a serious tone. Both Nala and Ayana looked back in the direction of the lake, but they didn't see any lion there, that when they realized, but it was too late. Splash splash ahaha fools, you really are brainless without me around ahaha. Asafa roared once again. His laughter echoed throughout the forest, maybe he had gone back to his childish ways, now that he had met his childhood friends, and reconciled with his past, and that might be why he felt so childlike right now. Soon he stopped laughing when he noticed that then two were still underwater. Huh, don't you two know how to swim? He shouted, but no response came. Erm you guys. Asafa said worriedly as he went to the edge of lake and looked down, trying to see if they had drowned. Just at that moment, both Nala and Ayana came out and dragged him down into the water. After they successfully threw him in, they climbed up. Nala, next time, let's not meet people that died when they were children, it seems like they stopped maturing for some reason. Sound like a good idea, we don't want to catch their immaturity. They spoke to each other as they shook their fur. Ha you got me, congratulations this is the first and last time you'll get me. Asafa said as he swam out. Is that so, we'll see about that. Ayana said, feeling challenged. Thahanala, look at him. Ayana laughed as she saw how Asafa's wet mane cover his whole face after getting out of the water. Nala looked at him and chuckled, trying to not laugh. She didn't want to fall to their level. Asafa started turning his head and shaking off the water, splashing Nala and Ayana after they had almost dried up. Hey, hey stop it. Ayana shouted as she backed up, not wanting to get his main water on her. Asafa stopped, and his face was hidden except the big grin on his lips, showing his dangerous fangs. I really missed you guys. Asafa suddenly said. Both stilled. Asafa lifted his wet mane from his eyes with his paw to see the two, and that's when they came to him and started rubbing their heads on his again. Ayana suddenly pushed him, making him fall over, bringing Nala with them. In the next moment, Asafa was over both Ayana and Nala, looking at them. And only then did he notice that they were no longer cubs, but adult lions. They stared at each other for a moment before Ayana licked the side of his face, making his eyes widen, then Nala licked the other side of his face. Asafa realized at that moment that both of them looked at the current, adult him, and probably saw their king, and with that, their mate. He could feel an intimate gaze from both of them, one of care and love. Asafa felt his heart beat harder and his blood rush as he looked at the two, it felt like there was something in the air between them. 
Something of excitement, slight embarrassment and something intense. Cough cough an angry cough was heard making the three look to the side. There stood a disappointed meerkat with folded arms. A swine looking angry. A snake shaking his head in disappointment and a black panther signing, as if she had failed her mission as a life coach. Erm this is not what it looks like. Asafa said. We leave you five minutes and his is what you do. Imani asked. I won't accept this under my trees. Taiman said. To think that you've demoted me to the second biggest snake here I'm disappointed. Hamu said. Asafa you should introduce us, Umba tried to ease the situation. Nala, Ayana and Asafa stood up awkwardly. Ah, it's Timmy and Pauli. Nice to meet you again. Ayana greeted the two she had seen earlier, Taiman and Pumba. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.